Welcome back to the watch. How do you feel, guys? I'm actually annoyed today. I don't. I. I'm. I'm upset with you, Shep. I'm actually <laughs> upset with you. I did not want to go watch that film. It was just as terrible as I thought it would be, and I'm annoyed. I'm annoyed mm. right now. I. D it was terrible. It was. It was. So we don't. We don't even need a spoiler section because it's from 1989. Like the ex the story beats are exactly the same. But they made a lot of changes. Nearly every single one of them making the film worse. Mm. So, of course, we're talking about The Little Mermaid um, recent remake that has just been released, and it was absolute crap. It was. <laughs> Your thoughts, Nathan? <laughs> I'm indifferent. You see, well, when, yeah, explain why. when, when explain three why. guys go to a, uh, a movie to watch a princess show, I'm kind of like, like, eh. Also, okay, I haven't seen the original. It's too old for me. That's, that's you why, never? That's why he's Gro been doing Growing up, I never watched it. Never? Wow. Um, I think every other princess... I haven't seen Snow White. I haven't seen Cinderella. I haven't seen... Okay. You know why I can enjoy princess films? Why? The prince. I can, you know, identify with the princes of the tale, mm. the um, hero who saves the damsel in distress, and that is one of the fundamental reasons why this adaptation sucks balls, by the way. We'll get to that. Yes. Um, so my only uh, exposure to it has been the ballet and knowing the like original fairy tale story because I've been dragged into that more recently. So I know the, like, the original story, but this one, why? Well, I'll take, like, you guys handle that because obviously, because as well, like you could say, you could try to defend it, say, well, this is a reinterpretation of it. This is a different story, but it's not. This is them remaking the original cartoon and trying to get as many member berries as you can while also injecting different stuff as well. There was no member berries, Nathan. Like, there was that, like, <laughs> the, it the was song. They, they were trying to but rope ev you in with every stuff. single song. Every single song in this film was worse than the cartoon. We're Just not kidding. Worse. Legitimately worse. Just uh, worse. Like, like the delivery, the uh, kind of momentum some of the times the choruses can build up to, the acting during the songs, and sometimes even changing the songs as well. well. The original one was animated. So no, no, yeah. no. The animation has better emoting. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Better emoting, which, and I could, I'd, like acting, expression of the yeah. characters, by a country mile than this, and I'm not kidding, right? A, a fake animated sh movie, the characters feel more human and lifelike than a live action adaptation. Not kidding. My favorite, one of my favorite Disney songs is Kiss the Girl. I mentioned it on a live stream. Mm. It's just worse. I, I thought that they changed it. They actually changed like the whole song to something mm -hmm. else. They didn't, they kept it but, for the most part. I think there was like one or two lines that they changed. But it was just worse. But, but they changed the motivation underpinning it, which makes it so much worse. I couldn't believe I'm thinking, why? Oh, look, we'll save it for the spoilers, but they changed something really, not just one, they changed multiple fundamental elements to the Little Mermaid story for bizarre reasons sometimes, because sometimes it's not even a woke reasons. It's like, hang on, this isn't even according to kind of the the, the woke politically correct narrative. And one big one that's associated with that song is changed and it makes it worse and more creepy as a result. I'm just thinking, what are they doing? <laughs> and that's just one example. They do it multiple times. The plot of this adaptation is fundamentally broken. Like the story beats are exactly the same as the the movie, the the animated movie, but they changed a lot of like little unnecessary details that gets us to those beats, yeah. which undermines them and makes them not make sense anymore. Mm. It's like now there are certain times characters are doing something that don't have the proper motivations or reasons for doing it, and it just looks bizarre. It's like what, why, and. The only answer I can come to, because like I said, some of these changes are not for or like being politically correct. It's just sheer incompetence. Mm. The people making, uh, working at Disney, making these adaptations are, and we've been seeing time and time again, are so bad at writing and storytelling that this is just another product of the same quality and the skill level, or being made by the same people with the same skill level as we've seen before. And as a result, it's a dumpster fire piece of crap uh, in terms of a narrative story. Before we even get onto the story, we watched it in the cinema. So we watched it where, as it's intended, mm. if you want to put it that way. Kevin Feige way. it was dark. It was hard to see. So, like, no, But not even, it was like a Snyder movie. It was so mm. gritty and dirty in some mm. areas where like, 
it's supposed to be uplifting and sunshine and beautiful. This that it was just very dark. It was hard to see a lot of the film. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then when you did get to like the sunny stuff, it still wasn't. It didn't pop. Nothing popped at me. It was just mm -hmm. very bland. It's so weird as to what they're really trying to make this movie appeal to. Like, like what makes you like it more? Because the songs are worse. worse. Um, the overall like visuals seem worse and less worse. enjoyable. The plot is to the point nonsensical and just stupid uh, because of some just bizarre changes because they just don't understand story and narrative. I mean, I, I, here's a small example. When we get to the spoiler section, I actually, I'm going to list all the changes or dumb moments in the film just so we can have a count of the ones I noticed. And it's not going to be, you know, cover all of them because crazy bounds. But this is a small thing. It's an example. And we'll get to more significant ones. But this isn't really a spoiler because it's a general thing throughout the film. Ariel who'd know very little about the human world. Just flat. You know, she thinks uh, a fork is a comb, a dingle hopper. And so even assumptions she have are, are completely wrong. And yet, at most... Did, didn't use it as a comb. Did well, you notice that? She she used yeah, it yeah, she, she, as a twirling thing. It was like spaghetti. Yeah. But at multiple times in the film, she suddenly has direct, accurate knowledge of the human world because random reasons. She knows what cannons are and that they'll use for battle. She knows what a corset is. She knows how to steer a ship. And I, that one pisses me off. We'll get to the specific reasons why, but that war. And she, did, she did see Eric do it at the start of the film. Yeah, I guess. Uh, but, but did it, she know that was but, steering? But the, like she... but the problem is, I, I, I just to double check before we started recording, mm. I went and watched the final fight scene because I was making sure that uh, I wasn't misremembering. Mm. I... We can't, uh, is it spoilers? Like the film's been out for like thirty years. Well, we can. Years. I reckon we can spoil the animation, but not any specific changes of the um, okay. live action. So in the end, Eric steers the ship into Ursula. Big to save hero Eric. moment, and it's really important for the overall narrative. And the happens. reason why that he's doing that is because Ursula wants to, you know, attack Ariel because that's mm. her enemy. She yes. just destroyed her her fish thing. Yeah, and she spreads the water apart and strands Ariel on a rock on the seabed floor yeah. and is about to laser her into oblivion. That happens in the film, just in a bit of a different way. In a, in a very different way. For no reason. No, well... That that one has a reason. Oh, it does. It does. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. And and so the thing is though, like you mentioned that Ariel saw Eric, you like she wouldn't know that steering the ship. It's like she doesn't know what would steer the ship. There's a ho whole heap of actions of tying ropes and pulling pulleys and doing things like she wouldn't know that's the thing to steer the ship. And that's not the only examples I've given. There are multiple ones, and I have more ones written down, of her just knowing stuff mm. that she shouldn't know. Small example. But it's an just a, a case in point indication of larger problems. And I'll point out larger problems where this film just are idiots making this. Are they aware of just the context and what they're trying to do and the, the story and a character wouldn't do this at this moment because it's dumb. They do it anyway. Like this is not a spoiler because it's just a dumb moment in the film and I can share it out of context. Uh, Ariel at one point realizes that she needs to get to a location which is not in the sea, it's mm. at the castle, and she dives into the water. Yes. Swimming is slower than walking. Exactly. Away. But she dives into the water, and then we see her walk running up to the location. I'm like, what, what you got, why? Why did you do that? I I she because this is a change, right? In the film, she needed to get to a location that was on a boat. But yes, it, that it, is, that, in the animation, yeah, they were on a boat for the in the animation the wedding, for the wedding. They were on a boat in the film. Then it's not on a wedding. Oh, sorry, it's not on a boat anymore. Yeah. My honest spoiler. I think you can forgive yeah, us for that one. But the the reason why on a boat worked was because everything happens in the ocean. And they yes, so like that was a really important plot point or location to trigger the plot to move where it needs to go. Because they changed that location. There's a lot of things that just don't make sense now. Like how the friggin' hell Eric found Ariel and Trident just in the middle of the ocean randomly. Before, it was on a boat and it was closer in location and he's like, I lost her once and I'm not going to lose her again. And he has, like, that's a perfect example of the type of changes that just make this movie stupid. Legitimately dumber than before. The people making this are like, what is going on? Okay? Because, and it's frustrating the original Little Mermaid had a very solid narrative. Actually, things went from point A to point B, making sense of everything. This one is multiple examples of what I just gave 
something really bad that break the the main narrative of the story, and you're just thinking, what is this crap? This is stupid. This is dumb. And so it's broken on a narrative level. And that's a very fundamental level for a story. And then there are things that are just not enjoyable. The music is oh. subpar. Oh, it is bad. It is when bad. The, like, like the, the Sebastian and the uh, Scuttle mm -hmm. thing, I literally wanted to just close my ears. Yeah, I didn't there, want to hear this. There is one song from Scuttle that was ear rape. Okay, it was that bad. And then they went out of their way to inject new songs. Like, like in terms of, they don't change much, but they want to, I don't know, be like, like do more songs. Cause, and every single new song is awful and stands out in stark contrast to the original songs, which were genuinely good. And then you have these sloppy, just crap dragging wet noodle songs that have oh, some, they feel out of place. Like, like, you know, the songs have a kind of, a, I don't know, some, a feeling of, I don't know, is it opera? They're operatic. They're like, they're ballad. They're swing, yeah. But, but there's a song by the Prince where it's like a, a lovesick boy band thing where it's like. And it was awfully auto-tuned. Like, worse than Beauty and the Beast auto-tuned. Like, <laughs> well, Ursula's was also pretty bad. The Melissa McCarthy song. Where, um, I like it in the original animation. The, mm -hmm. what is it? Poor Unfortunate Souls. That's yeah. A good, that's a good song. But in the film, it's not that good. See, oddly enough, I thought her song was the least worst one out of the remakes. Mm. I'd probably... I wouldn't call it as nearly as good. It's not as the good. Kiss the Girl was my favorite in the film because mm -hmm. it's my, one of my favorites, but it's still like nowhere near, nowhere near no as good as, near. The orig no uh, as the original. And I, I feel like the best way to describe this film is if you've seen the original film, you can see... You can see the Little Mermaid in the film. Like, you can see the plot points and all that sort of stuff. But it's at the same time, simultaneously, it's nothing like the original film. Like, it's, it, mm -hmm. it's holding these two contradictory points. Mm -hmm. And I do not like it. Yeah, it's, it's awful. So, like, in terms of, I don't know, songs that have a feeling that they fit with the other songs in the world, would you, would you consider a rap to, uh, to no, fit? No. no. No, that's the Scuttle song. It's a rap. And it is, like I said ear rape and just awful and so out of place and you just bleh. and then they were so desperate to try to inject a song um ariel she can't speak so, they so, made her so anyway. she, yeah. she has a mind song <laughs> that, that doesn't happen in the in the original film. Yeah, sure. i mean didn't think it made sense either and um and it's in that song where she like she doesn't know what soap is but she knows of course it is because breeze is like and the song was just so poorly written it didn't have the gravitas of the other ones it just stood out and it was crap okay and so we are like levels and levels of bad in this film and now we come to the appearance of the characters every character like just did not look or feel like the originals the closest one was the sea witch for me but even she wasn't good but she was the, the you know the least worst one but Oh my gosh, did Trident feel like a wet noodle and the acting was awful for him and he just did not feel like Trident at all. He had no presence and command. He just felt flat, okay? And so didn't feel like the original character. My gosh, Sebastian and Flounder, right? I, we cannot, I, I cannot express enough how bad that CGI was. Like they looked so stiff and they couldn't emote. And so when you see Sebastian talking and expressing, you're not getting really any of the emotion of what he's trying to say on his face because he looks so wooden as it's this weird, overly realistic, but still looking terribly fake thing. Flounder has that problem uh, as well as Sebastian. And, and so they don't feel like the original characters one bit, not even a smidge. And then of course we come to Ariel who looks nothing like the original. I think they got pretty good with the voice, but that's about it. I think she was not doing really like the sure she has a good voice. Yes, yeah. this is true, but it's still like not as good as the original film. You that's know what annoyed point. me? It's I got annoyed when she tried to add her own little flares into the songs. Like when you know that thing where they have the end of uh, they're holding a tune, but then they yeah. do a ver like like I don't know, it's like a reverb where they go oh, or something like that at the end, right? I hated that when she injected that into her, her songs. It's like, no, just do it like the original. We don't want you to do your own flair. On. There was a song in the film where they both started singing, where she was in it, but she was she added herself into the song. 
I'm trying to remember which one. There was a song. Under the Sea? Was it Under the Sea? It was Under the Sea. It's Under the Sea. She wasn't, she didn't sing she anything did not in that like, one. Yeah. Yeah, and I, then she started, that, I, I did not like that. Like, small spoiler, um, not really, but this is one of those changes that was dumb. There was no reason for it, and it undermined actual plot points, okay? The purpose of that song is to try and convince her that Under the Sea is better, and she doesn't want to, and she's not into it. Mm. This adaptation has her singing along with Sebastian at certain po points, and I'm like, hang on, no, that, that, that's implying that she's on board with Under the Sea is great, when the narrative is that she knows she wants to leave the sea. And so it contradicts the entire narrative, and so why'd you make that change? There's no point, it's just stupid! Who's making these changes? It's dumb! There is an interesting philosophical debate to be had when Flounder and uh, Ariel are returning from the shark and uh, Scudder, Scudder or whatever, dives down and eats the fish in front of Flounder <laughs> and then they just all talk. Yeah, well, like, like, with it. Like, I, I mean, the whole thing was like, humans bad for killing yeah, fish. Yeah. Flounder kills these fish in front of... And then, by the way, Flounder breathes underwater and talks underwater for ages as well. Yeah. Is it Flounder? No, not no, Flounder. Flounder. Scuttle. Scuttle. Well, Scuttle. Scuttle. Originally, when they Scuttle do that, goes and they're on the rock. They're, yeah, they're yeah. Above the air. This time it's underwater, and Scuttle is talking underwater and just floating around in there. And, like, I'm not, like I, 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 I don't want to miss these ones because we might miss them in the spoiler section. But hopefully, I, because... Should we get to the spoiler? We will. We're, <laughs> we need, like... we're soon. But that's another perfect example of something so astronomically dumb that didn't need to be changed. Just have them speak with Scuttle above the surface, which makes her breaking the rules even worse because she went to the surface. Now she doesn't go to the surface. She spoke with Scuttle. Scuttle goes underwater. There was no reason for the change, and it makes the movie more stupid. Like, fundamentally so. And you're just thinking, and then it also undermines a plot narrative point of her breaking the rules. This is stupid! Who wrote this crap? And the animation is just orders of magnitude better than this slop. Okay? And so, Ariel ending off doesn't look like Ariel at all. I did not feel this is the Little Mermaid and anything. She should be a big redhead. They do make some other changes which are weird. Do, do keep in mind that this is paired with the fact that the film is very dark. Like, it's actually hard yeah, to see yeah. in a lot of scenes. Yeah. Like, not just underwater scenes, just mm -hmm. like scenes in general. They're yeah. just dark. Yeah, they are. It's bizarre. And, and so, one of the things that you want in an adaptation is to get a sense of recognition when you look at these characters, to feel like, hey, this is the animation, but more real, and it draws you in. This has the reverse effect. I have as much criticism for Trident not matching a character as I do with Ariel. So this isn't about skin color, okay? It's about- the only thing he didn't match was he was wearing armor. In the original cartoon, he just has his- He was topless, dress. but he had a really white beard and he was strong and imposing. He had a voice of command and a softness as well. And uh, I didn't get anything from the Triton in the, like that in the, in this version. I was much more forgiving of that. Like I like, uh, I think his name is Joel Javier. No, yeah. All right. I, I can't remember what his name is. The actor who plays him, he's a great actor. Mm -hmm. uh, in this, he was the most enjoyable part as well as the witch. Everything else I just... You know. See, only the witch, like barely, barely for me. I, I, I particularly didn't like Triton. You um, got to remember, the, the, we're talking about characters that have like five minutes of screen time as well. In a two hour and 15 minute movie. Oh, the witch has a bit more. Not really. Mm, Maybe like does. 20 minutes. Just snippets have been like, yeah, oh like, no. Yeah, that's some yeah. of the screen time. Um, Cutaways, those are. Yeah, so what I was saying is that you want that sense of recognition. And we've always said the, the thing about adaptation is capturing the most visually important elements of a character. And you can actually, for characters that don't have as much visual, I guess, importance to identify the character, there's a bit more room to change things up. Usually you'd want it for a good reason, like they did with um, Daredevil, the original Daredevil with Michael Clark Duncan as Kingpin because of his size, he just encapsulated the role. And so that was a truer interpretation of a live action, you know, version of the Kingpin to capture the size and Im how imposing he should be. And the color skin didn't matter at all that he became black. Uh, Nick Fury, good example, just keep the eye patch. And it actually lifted the character. Uh, with Ariel, I, you do not see Ariel when you look at this change. It's like the, Ariel had such striking red hair, okay? Well, it's all of them as well. It's mm -hmm. pretty much because they went ultra. I don't know why Disney keeps doing this. What did they not learn from like The Lion King and all these other films they do? Going ultra realistic on animation adaptions just doesn't, it doesn't look good. Mm -hmm. I don't like it. Yeah. There's a yeah. reason why there was a, such a big uh, backlash to Sonic. They learned mm. their lesson. Well, don't, don't Sonic give, did. Don't yeah. give Sonic teeth. <laughs> yeah. You know, like same thing with Flounder. He literally looks. 
a stupid face, but yeah. he, he looks like, like a, a real fish. fish. And it just doesn't look mm. good when you know that they're supposed to look big and chubby, has big chubby cheeks and things like that. It's... Yeah, yeah. And so, but like I said, my disconnection with Ariel is as significant as it was with Trident in this film. They made some other changes, which they don't matter, but they, it is odd and like why and everything. Um, the location of the film has changed completely. 100%. Mm -hmm. Different. Different. It's just. Now, th this one. I'm a little divided on, okay, because uh, I actually don't necessarily have too much of an issue when you take a story and put it in a new location to make, a, I don't know, in a different perspective, uh, make it more interesting, and, and it's been done multiple times before, uh, Seven Samurai, Magnificent Seven, the Western, okay? Mm -hmm. It's a direct adaptation, but in a new culture, different location. Um, they do it even with classics like Hamlet, The Lion King. But why go to all the trouble and then make the prince adopted? Exactly. Just... No, that was exactly going to be my point. It's like they they literally changed the location. So uh, Little Mermaid was originally based in Denmark. It's a da oh, classic Danish tale, all right? And they picked it up and they basically put it in somewhere in the Caribbean. Caribbean. Okay. Uh, uh, and so the kingdom has a black monarch and there's, a, you know, a very kind of strong representation of, you know, people with darker skin. Don't really care, but then that would make mean the prince should have black skin, should he not? But they made him adopted. Mm. So why? That like it's injecting an odd plot point that is completely unnecessary. Like truly unnecessary. The adoption thing is gets mentioned, but that's it. Just to explain why he's white, basically. Yeah. It was unneeded. They should have made him black. <laughs> it would make more sense. Yeah. And and the change doesn't give a different perspective in terms of Culture, except for maybe music, when she gets to amongst the people, they're there. That's, you know. what, that's what I said. Like they've changed so many small details. They've changed so much that it it doesn't it doesn't look mm -hmm. like the the animation, but for no reason. At the yeah. same time, like if you've watched the animation, you go, okay, that's kind of like the animation, mm -hmm. but it's completely different. Yeah, Why? It, it, they went so like hard to try and make certain parts look like the animation, and then they like changed. The, like the lagoon scene is almost mm -hmm. like a one for one. There's like mm. there's scenes where it's literally a one for yeah, one, yeah. and then other scenes that are just exactly. made up. Like when um, Ariel and Arik are embracing, and the giant um, crown separates them as it coming out of the water. One, one for one. one remake, almost right. So they go out of their way to make it like almost exact, and then other things completely different. Like right. the castle doesn't look a thing like the original castle. It doesn't make you feel like this is the Little Mermaid castle. The the land that they're going amongst and the people doesn't feel like the Little Mermaid, and. You know the reason why they made this change because they want it to be more diverse. But the thing is, though, if you're going to like take a story and put it in a new location with a completely different culture and everything, you would usually lean into that a bit more. But they didn't want to. They wanted it to feel and look like the original. They, like, if they were going to do that, they should have embraced it like they did with um, uh, the frog, Princess Frog, um, where they just, it's in this location with this culture and they just lean into it and do the whole thing. And... Uh, they didn't do it with this, and it's just confusing and therefore I, unnecessary. That's what I think. That's what actually makes it so jarring. There are yeah. one for one scenes, like identical to the animation, but then there are scenes that are just like brand new. You've never seen for one. You're going like, wait, what? Like when Trident's destroying all her stuff. That's mm -hmm. a one for one scene mm -hmm. that is taken directly from the animation. But everything else, oh, they change certain lines though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's a big line which is also part of the plot that they really wanted to. Almost get rid of it. It's still there, but they reduce it so much that the plot now doesn't work. And we'll talk about that in the spoilers. Should we talk about the spoilers? I think we were, we're about there. I just, that last point about the location change and stuff, it's just so weird now. It's like, you went out of your way to keep the prince looking like he was in the animation, but you changed Ariel, the main character, who has vastly more visual like, recognition significance to the audience than Eric. Like, you could have changed Eric with less of a jarring, you know, that's not Eric, than you could with Ariel. But Ariel, redhead, okay? And, and so they go out of their way to be keep something accurate, and then they change something that's actually vastly more important to have been. And it's a mess. This film is a mess. This movie is hard to rate. Because it's hard to watch. I, it's hard to watch. I got nothing out of it. Um, and you're comparing it again. Like, it's hard to gauge on its own merits if it even has any, because you've got the animation, which is just standing in stark contrast, which makes this film 
feel and look so much worse because everything you see in it, you're thinking, oh, the animation did it better, like way better. And so I, I, it's hard for me to gauge on its own merits as a result. I mean, it, it, the plot is a mess still. It's completely broken. Um, and there's so much stupid things in it. I'm, I think I'm in like two out of 10 territory with this thing. What do you guys think? What do you think? Uh, I'm not going to give it a number rating. I'm just going to say it's terrible and yeah. don't watch it. Like if, if you like the animation, just watch the animation. Yeah, just watch it. Like, like th this feels like a slap in the face to the quality of the animation. This is not a tribute. This is a, almost a desecration. Okay. Like I grew up watching a lot of the Disney films and mm, that includes same. things like The Little Mermaid. I have nostalgia for them. It's same. a great film. Same. This was not. Just wasn't. Nathan. Keep in mind that he hasn't watched or, the original that's what I'm gonna film. Say, for someone who hasn't seen it, if you're going to get dragged to this, you can probably bear it. You can probably watch through. There isn't enough agenda politics driven into it that maybe you want to walk out the film. Can, can I say it's not in your face, yeah. but it's there in the background. It's subtle. It's, it's subtle. Mm -hmm. And so if, if you've been compelled to watch this with someone, which I know some people, you know, they get dragged yeah. into this sort of stuff. Compelled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You're not going to... Like, if you haven't seen it, I'm saying. If you yeah, have, yeah, right, it's right, going right. to be a painful Refuse. experience. Refuse. But <laughs> if you haven't, then it's bearable. You can watch it. Close your eyes and pretend <laughs> it's a movie. I don't know. Um, I guess there's one other point that I wanted to mention about the, um, the location change. Because I said I was divided. And so at one point, I don't care. And sometimes I find it interesting and fun to have the location completely changed to another culture. They didn't even do that because they didn't embrace it. And, they, and so it, it's useless. But the other side to this is the fact that this is a traditional Danish tale. Okay. Um, and so there's the idea about cultural vandalism. I, like it, what I guess my take on this is that I would have been more annoyed if they kept it in based in Denmark, but then still had all the different, you know, changes that they made. Because to me, that's in the same line as like changing Anne Boleyn to be black, who was not a traditionally black. I get to, if you're going to put it in a location, respect the location and history and the culture. And so I actually kind of prefer that they change the entire location to justify their more diverse cast because they want to be politically correct um, than having kept it in Denmark. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, then there is this disconnect of where the history and culture of this tale truly comes from, um, which is, I feel a bit of a loss because. It's good to kind of, I don't know, understand and appreciate the cultural heritage of our tales. And The Little Mermaid is a classic tale. But they've, they've removed it from its heritage. I would also like to see more like original, original fairy tales made in live mm. action. Like, oh, yeah, like the Disney that. one, Disney Mermaid, is a very happy ending. Like the original <laughs> Little Mermaid, it's like, you've got no soul. You want a soul? You're going to marry this man. What's that? The man loves another girl? You can kill him or her or yourself. Like, it's a lot more mm. dark and, you know, people forget that the fairy tales are actually kind of messed up in a way. But a And some of them were very, like, cautionary tales with, yeah. with not fun endings. But at least they had, like, a very clear message of, like, you should watch out for these things. Yeah. <laughs> but sometimes I think fairy tales get a bit too dreamy and, like, you can do whatever you can. And so when reality, when we are, uh, when reality actually comes and hits you in the face, people are a bit mm. well, the interesting taken thing, aback. I, the, the Disney classics were made in a time when people understood classic tropes and classic tales. Mm. Damsville in Distress, True Love, Love at First Sight, the hero coming in, all those things. Little Mermaid has those. And it's wonderful as a result. Those are the things that this film finds offensive. Mm. And we're going to get into the specifics because this film, oh no, you could not have a man save a woman. And oh no, you could not have a girl fall head over heels in love for a guy that she's, you know, just seen and thinks is beautiful. and and. Uh, willing to throw like she doesn't throw but you know she she's desperate to follow after him because of this infatuation because part of the little Mer 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 sorry part of the little mermaid tale is a tale of naivety and mm -hmm. and growing up but also overcoming and that sometimes you know this love at first sight the dream is that i cuz i think most people re understand love at first sight yes. it's rare it's nonsense no no it can happen nonsense it's got, oh, i've got a video so it can actually happen it's nonsense happened to me Nonsense. Continue on. No, but it's Shall the dream. I don't no, believe I... you. I've seen you go, that girl. Yeah, I'm going to marry her one day. When the, what? <laughs> when have I ever said no, that? No, you haven't said that. I've, I've said, said other things. I've said, she's thick, Nathan. I've said that. <laughs> That's your modern interpretation. <laughs> no, that Back is not. Back in the day, it would have been no, that is not. first sight right there. No, no, but day. I do, like, actual love at first sight. 
is a thing that is romantic and rarely happens, but it does happen. And part of the tale is to just have the dream kind mm. of, it's a, it's a, it's a wonderful romantic tale of love truly overcoming. And that's what the little mermaid was. Okay. And most, like most people are not so dumb to think that that's what the love should always be like, but no, it's, that's the romanticism of the tale. Um, and I think they did it brilliantly. In fact, masterfully in the Cinderella adaptation. I love at first sight in that is just done beautifully. I got a video on Shadowversity breaking the scene down and they pull it off and it's incredible. And it's the only Disney remake that's worth a damn. Like, like I genuinely love the Cinderella Disney remake. And one of the things that I think like just works so well about that one versus say something like this is they didn't go into it trying to make a one for one remake. And if anything, there's a couple of nods to the classic Cinderella animation, like with the mice and things like that, but it's not a musical. In fact, there's a musical number in it, but they go into go in, they went into it trying to make a good story, okay, a story that could stand on its own merits that isn't hung up about its origin, and they actually the changes in it make it better. It's at the the adaptation of Cinderella, the Disney remake, is better than the animation, and I love it. But then they lost the plot on everything else, and they just want to make this sanitized, watered down, politically correct, sometimes one for one remake that's not, ref that's too afraid to making certain changes and then doesn't give us stuff and, and makes horrible changes to other things. And we get sloppy crap like this that is just a shadow of the original. And so, spoilers. Now. now we're going into spoilers. This is your warning. You've been warned. Spoiler section time. Let's, uh, let's, uh, let's break it down. Where do you guys want to begin? The start. The I start. mean, you have a long list here. I do. I do have a long list. So part of this story, there, this, uh, this new plot is about uh, bigotry. It's not about love. It's about humans bad. and That's in the original. It is, but the main plot of the original is a love story. And mm. the humans bad thing was... The narrative device that gave Triton the um, objection for that relationship. Now this is almost the main point of the story. And in fact, they go out of their way to replace the love story with this. The scene where Ariel says, but daddy, I love him, is replaced with uh, that doesn't make us enemies. Love story replaced by that. Now, if that's the story there are some things that really undermine it in a big way towards the end as well and the payoff, okay? Mm. But that seems to be the, the thing at the forefront. And they kind of work against each other a bit because it starts off with the humans trying to kill a mermaid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And is it, it's Ariel, I think. Someone tried to, yeah. they, they yeah, tried to harpoon is. her. Yeah. Wouldn't that make her a bit more wary of you? It's like, it doesn't... Yeah, like, probably. Doesn't really phase her though. She's still like, oh, humans. They're just trying to harpoon you. <laughs> like, I mean, isn't that gonna make you just a little cautious? So it's a change that they made to have the uh, story of, you know, two sides that don't like each other that that's undermining the love story. And so it's a change that is making the story worse. And it's the first one right out of the gate, which was just like, okay. I mean, in the begin, the, the animation had like the the sailors just dancing along, trying to capture a fish and a fish trying to get free, and and it's nothing as like severe as it's a mermaid harpooner. <laughs> it's like humans just catching fish because fish we eat fish. So okay, there's that, and then there's a conversation about mermaids, and for some reason the humans know about a very specific gathering of mermaids. What do they call it? The coral... Coral moon. Coral moon. Yeah. The mermaids are going to be gathering the coral moon. I'm like, how the hell did you know that? Magic, Shad. Magic, I like... It's all magic. Did, all was there down. some interaction of mermaids in the past where I was, I don't know, some mermaids like, yeah, we got this thing called a coral moon and then the sailor just spreads it around because I... I it's bizarre. And, uh, and then I needed... Like, like the humans know that. Like, what did that add to the film? It was explaining to the viewers what that was. It wasn't actually for the world of the story. 
but the but the mermaids refer to the coral moon yeah. gathering thing as well. So the humans didn't need it. Like, why? It's it's an unnecessary change, which is dumb. Number two. Not ten. <laughs> Wait, I'm, I'm counting them. I'm Top counting 50. them. So now we have the introduction of well, we have this gathering, this coral moon gathering, and uh, there's these mermaid mermaids coming in. Did anyone like just wonder about Triton's entrance in the scene and what he was doing? Like he was came up from the ground. Yeah, he was buried underground. And then the fish came and like. His, his entrance is to just magic, uh, like appear from the depths of the ground. Yeah. He just, it is off time. He likes to bury himself underground and just hang out. It's like, I know they did it for some impressive, it's, but it's the same stupidity of the, like, you know, Star Destroyers being buried underground in Rise of Skywalker. It, it makes no sense, but they did it for the reveal when they could have had Tyranth is having PTSD. <laughs> <laughs> it's torture for you, isn't it? They could have had any number of impressive entrances, but they chose one of the dumbest ones. Why? <laughs> Number three. We're going, we're going to be on a roll here. Okay, so it turns out Trident. Wow, he must he must be a bit of a I don't know a player. I guess I guess polygamy is a very standard thing. Uh, in the Mer people um, I'm thing. I'm pretty sure it's in the original film. So what you're going for, I'm pretty sure it's in the original film. I don't know. The daughters look mostly alike. Uh, I think they're different. No, no. In in this, they make sure they make the daughters like every single representation. In the it, it, in the animation, you can easily just think, you know, he has a wife and lots of daughters. In this, he has to have had multiple li wives <laughs> to get this result. Right, well, seven. Seven C's. Seven daughters. He's Seven his, and he's got some tail at each location. It's like, it's, it's meaningless. It doesn't really mean anything. They do it for just because like, they want their diversity, but it's like, okay, it's just, there's some implications there about their society. I don't know if you, yep, all right. Um, uh, my first reaction to uh, the, the crab, the Sebastian. Bastion, yeah. just looks so bad. Terrible. His first reveal was Sonic awful. with teeth but with eyes this time instead. And so a little mouth. here is a big change, a big Gura change, let me say, right? Which messes up the narrative of the story. So the original, it wasn't a choral gathering. It was a birthday celebration mm -hmm. with the birthday girl showing off one of her grandest and most impressive and loveliest skills, her voice. Ariel has a voice of an angel. And Sebastian spent all this time preparing a, a performance that he wrote that Ariel was going to sing. And so that centralizes the plot around her voice. Her voice is important because she was going to sing and it's unique and special. They got rid of it. That's not it. It's just a gathering to get some type of report of like, you know, seven seas, tell me how things are going. And so the narrative of her voice being so significant is only now given lip service when they refer to it, your siren song. And it's nowhere near as important. And so why, why, why did you change that? It's, it makes no sense and it doesn't improve the film at all. In fact, it makes it worse because it messes up one of the narrative elements of it that makes a story important. So there's another one. That one's a big one. It's still on the list, but it's one of the bigger, you know, um, things. Uh, then they go to the sunken ships yep. to find human things. And, and she looks in the ship and she sees cannons and she's like, ah, oh, it must have been a battle. And I was thinking like, how do you know what cannons and battle are? I, again, you're not supposed to know really anything about Maybe the human world. Maybe she saw ships fighting. We shouldn't have to explain this headcap, but the fact is it makes it inconsistent about how much she is supposed to know and how oh, the original film basically nothing and it made sense and so she was making little goofs here and there now she has arbitrary knowledge here and there of the human world because unexplained just it's now it's there and so okay um there she's grabbing stuff on the sunken ships and 
They see a mirror. Yeah. It's a reflection. Yeah. They do that to set up trapping the shark because the shark comes. Same as the film, I'm pretty sure. I haven't rewatched it in a while, but I'm pretty sure that's the same. No, because the shark gets stuck in like a metal ring that's not a mirror, though. Oh, you're right. That's why I'm getting confused. Yeah. yeah. I, I knew he got stuck in a metal ring. I yeah. just assumed the mirror I mean, was the frame of a mirror would not have stuck a shark. Yes. <laughs> also, mermaids don't exist, shark. No, 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 no. no. Like... There are certain fundamental things that the movie expects us to understand for it to work. For instance, humans can't breathe underwater. Mm. Okay. Birds can. But birds can. Exactly. Exa so do you see where the inconsistency are? And so if the film is actually expecting us to take the understanding that certain laws of physics and reality are in place for the narrative to work and then undermines in other parts, they're being dumb and inconsistent. And it is a criticism. And so, so, so it's a bad film. It is a bad film, but, but we're pointing yeah. out why. Now is the reasons and, and receipts that we're bringing to explain why it's a bad film. Uh, and so... I don't necessarily know why they needed to, you know, change it, change it to the mirror, but it's like they, they change it because, yeah, okay, sure. Scuttle comes underwater. I, they, they, go, they meet Scuttle and they have that whole scene. And this is just, so this is a big, stupid change. Well, so, those type of birds do dive underwater to get fish. That's, yeah. that's fine. But then they have a conversation underwater. I don't know why. They're, they're literally on a rock under the water. Why not just go to the top of the rock mm. where the actual film? I don't get it. I just don't. Yeah. Get it. And look, it's so tiring. Is it who's is Aquafina? Is that the actress? The the voice actress? Like oh, Eddie, who? the voice actress of Scuttle. I had no idea. She played um an annoying character in Shang Chi. Mm. Why would you pick her as a voice actor? Like the because because she's a big name in Hollywood. Because. <sighs> Pelicans and seagulls are annoying, and that was annoying. Yeah, it was re that was like there you go. nails on chalkboard. Yeah, Scuttle was supposed to be goofy, annoying, not like the voice. Well, they tried is ear rape. They tried. <laughs> they tried. Even in the movie, though, people were annoyed with Scuttle. They're like, quiet, quiet, dumb bird. But in a comical way, like, like when Scuttle tries to sing and is making a really loud racket and noise instead. Um. And so Scuttle has none of the charm and it's just ear grating cringe. And even small things like, like when uh, Scuttle says there's a dingle hopper in the animation, his confidence, this is a dingle hopper in this. They actually show Scuttle. Has, uh, it's, a, it's a dingle hopper. Yeah. And like, you know, making it more obvious that Scuttle is just making up crap and, and, and is lying where before he was just goofy and misinformed and, and stuff. I just realized that in the original film, Scuttle is a male voice. Yeah. I just realized that. I, mm. I, I mean, it doesn't really change too much. I was just thinking about that. I just I mean, realized. Well, I, I, Scuttle is just awful. The voice is yeah. like ear grating pain to listen to and uh, unenjoyable. And there's not this goofy element anymore. It's just this is a, it's an annoying, dumb bird who can breathe underwater. I mean, and so that's like multiple changes. They change because... I already explained how broke how this really breaks some of the plots. Like she doesn't even go to the surface, so she doesn't get in trouble of going to the surface. So that's like one. Uh, Scuttle was breathing underwater. That's another dumb thing. Okay. Um, the voice and uh, is just really grating and painful. Uh, the interaction, like Scuttle, more obvious. So th there are there are layers to how that scene doesn't work. So I wasn't sold on Ariel's. Uh, infatuation with the human world in this mm. the animation seems like she actually you know i don't know it felt more sincere where this is just like i don't know it just didn't didn't hit me this could be my own subjective reaction to it because this movie did not feel like the original but yeah she goes into the song it's a soulless copy of the original not nearly as good and the desire like you know i want to be part of the world just didn't feel genuine um and then there's this weird like then they change certain elements to the song where she does her own vocalization on it and it's like no no stop it stop it yeah so that that was just like oh is this is this the the That's level <laughs> is this the level all right all right i'm going to mention on that is like when it comes to these sort of adaptations nobody's going to mind if you make it brighter and more colorful and all yeah. these sorts of things nobody's going to complain about it so when they go for this like ultra realistic like the dark depths of the ocean trying mm. to see things is difficult 
It's dark down there. <laughs> um, it, my kind of thoughts throughout this film, it's like, this is like watching a film with cosplayers. Just the cosplayers filling the role, wanting to just be in the land. It doesn't feel like the film. I was uh, thinking the, if it was like a Disney, not even a Disney Plus thing, just like some sh live action on some Sunday show, I'd be like, yeah, whatever, it is what mm -hmm. it is. But it was not, it didn't feel very high production and good. Mm, it wasn't yeah. top tier stuff. Mm. Uh, and so the next scene is her watching Eric on the boat, I think. Um, because yeah, that's right. After the song ends, she hears like something. The fireworks. Yeah, the fireworks. That's right. And that attracts her attention. And so you watched the animation recently? No. Okay. This is all just from memory. This is all from like memory. Because my, years my ago, memory, however, however. that's right. No, yeah. I think my memory is accurate. When she goes to spy on the humans, she instantly falls in love with Eric. He's the most beautiful human she's ever seen that's a distinct plot point in the animation because he says it to scuttle and he's like ah isn't he a bit hairy and slobbery and she's no the one playing the snore flat and is playing a flute and she is enchanted by him and uh, there's none of that in this scene she's just watching there is no comment about how beautiful she finds eric it's gone because this movie doesn't want to dwell on a love story and they again this is a fundamental change which makes the movie so much worse in comparison to, say, the animation, where she's obsessed with the... Now her desire to really be a human is not because of love and Eric. It's because humans have cool things and she's enamored by the world. And it's less of a love story. And yet, even though that's pretty clear, then there are elements where they try and say she is in love with Eric. There's this bizarre line... Where um the uh, witch king Ursula, she says that um she's already in love with the human world, not in love with a human. She says ha, she's already in love with the human world, and so implying that it, this isn't a love story. But then she follows up with like and found her soulmate, and I'm thinking. She hasn't. The movie hasn't shown any yet. like infatuation, overall affection, love with Eric. And the scene that should have established that is this one when she first sees him and they cut it completely. And so the movie's trying to say now she actually she's found her soulmate in Eric. It's like, no, the movie, you're telling us the complete opposite. That says she's just infatuated with the human world. And so you can't have your cake and eat it too. And so dumb change, which is actually undermining a core narrative element as to her motivations and then the reason why she likes Eric and they change it. They got rid of it. There's another one. Another useless change, which makes it worse and it was unnecessary. And it does make me wonder, like, why do you think they went out of their way to remove the infatuation and love and attraction she has towards Eric? Is it, do they think it's problematic? Like, is that why? Well, so I mean, I don't understand. It's like, there's, there's major beats of the film that are kind of pretty much one for one, mm -hmm. but then there's just other stuff that they're just not the same at all. Yeah. So that's why, I'm, that's why I don't know what I'm supposed to be feeling. I know. Like the statue. That statue she finds isn't a statue of Eric. It's just a random fixture that was on the ship. I I think I agree with you, but I thought it was just a terrible one of Eric. But, I, I, but the, the animation has a specific moment yeah, it, where like, it's it a looks, present. It looks and they, identical. Yeah, the, yeah. Exactly. And it's a statue made for him on his birthday. They removed that as well. Yeah. Why? <laughs> I think it's supposed to be him. Because she like, when, when Trident destroys it, as he does, She's like holding the hand of it. Okay, well, so I think it's supposed to be him. It just looks terrible. But then, that's the execution is so bad because there's no indication that it was or the build up or where it was on the ship is not a present anymore, and it doesn't look like him. I didn't think it was a statue of him. And so again, another stupid change where they remove the statue being a present, and it undermines the narrative because she finds a statue of. The guy that she now really loves is beautiful. And so that statue is important to her, which makes the destruction of the statue more cutting uh, to her and more emotionally impactful. To me, it's like a random statue that she liked and is pretty, and it doesn't have nearly the weight when Triton destroys it as the animation. Why would you change that? It's so dumb. And it makes the film worse. Okay? Uh, because... Originally, there was that, that connection. Now, 
the the impact of Trident. It's not there. So another big one as to dumb. And it's in this scene that it's changed. And so we have her not remarking on Eric why he's beautiful. The statue's not there. So again, we were, I already mentioned, but I, this is where I took the note. Is like, there's been no real emphasis on a beautiful voice. Like her voice isn't a distinct important feature of her talents here. Well, the fact that they even call it a siren call. Yeah. They did in the original film. It was never mentioned in like, because when you say it's a siren call, it has like a negative yeah, attachment. That has some magical like, effect yeah, to allure. You're lure. forcing him yes. to do it. It's like, but in the original film, it's just her voice is so beautiful. Beautiful voice. Yeah. And so it actually makes her song, her voice in this film, like an evil trapping thing. Yeah. And so again, it's a, another change. That was completely unnecessary and made the film worse. It's on, it's on the list. We've got a growing list. It starts raining really heavily in this one. The storm comes. Like, like mass, really, really heavily. As in, you're in there two seconds, you'd be drenched. And so now they want us to just accept that someone knocked over a lantern and the entire ship suddenly bursts of flame in heavy rain. This movie is retarded. Is that what happened? Yes. Yes. Like they literally, the lantern drops, then a, like, like, and it's like it set a puddle of, of, um, petrol on fire to the mast. And then it runs up the mast and the entire, like drenchingly wet, you know, sails burst aflame. I didn't even see that. I don't yeah. Remember. I was, I was thinking. That must have what? happened real quick. Like I'm up yeah, there, like, in my head and then oh, I just fire. I'm like, oh, okay. Something happened. Yeah. Yeah, I was just like. How, what? And uh, I guess they wanted it raining to be more epic. And I, I'm trying to remember if it was raining in the animation. I can't remember. But even if it was, it was nowhere near as severe. Um, and I'm trying to remember how that ship sunk. Because in this one, it, it actually, they're sailing. And for some reason, they just, clouds part. And there's a massive rock in front of them. Yeah. And they just hammer into it, yeah. which knocks the um, lantern down. And it sets the ship ablaze. Yeah, that's that's what I mean. That's yeah, because the 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 storm comes, and mm. then all of a sudden they're like, hey, blah, blah, and then all of a sudden there's a giant rock there, and they yeah. crash into the rock. Yeah, yeah, that's what happened. I was, but then it knocks the lantern, and yeah. everything goes on fire. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in the animation, I, I, I can't remember how it sunk. <laughs> I think I can go out on a limb and say it made a lot more sense than this I've version. Got a, I've got a feeling it's probably the same. I don't know. Like when you said lantern, I'm like, that sounds familiar for some reason. So I, I can't remember. I remember it's been a long time, but... there was a, there was a fire. I don't remember it raining so heavily, and the fire was reaching the I don't know the the explosive or fireworks mm. thing which explodes yeah. the boat. But they recreate the thing where he goes back to save his dog. Uh, but then the ship gets knocked, and and then he slides off the side of the side, and he's sinking. Look, there was, this is there was an small little addition that I actually thought was it was good uh, you know it's one of those small things it didn't mean much but I thought there was a, a slight improvement when she saves the dog she helps the dog she she swims under and helps the the puppy get onto the boat could that be one of the only changes in the film that actually is like after, like yeah good a little 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 thing that is it lifted the film attack Ariel helps dogs Ariel is kind and even helped the puppy so, um, then Eric is sinking. He goes in, gets Eric, pulls him up, and uh, I guess swims him to the shoreline. So it's daytime. He is there, and uh, at first it takes a while. I, I almost felt like they weren't going to have her sing in this part. I thought she was going to give him chest compressions. And I was going to be like, wait, what? Well, he's not. She, she didn't, but no, I, no, no, I was no, expecting. She kind of do with the she shake. She did, though. You know? the, the shake was like, they specifically made it. No. So it's like when over you, the chest. Ev everybody what? shakes up. Like, I actually thought she was going to like <laughs> do chest <laughs> compressions. I was like, okay. <laughs> okay, so she does start to sing. Because this, this moment is very important that she sings. Because Eric's real only memory of this is the voice. It's an important plot element. She sings. People come to go help him. She jumps into the water. And the reason why this scene doesn't work nearly as well as the original is that she's not as infatuated with him. In the animation, she was head over heels in love. Most beautiful human she's ever seen. She is now 
face to face with him and he's even more beautiful. And that's when she really gets infatuated with him. So much so that she is so in love that she is going to do whatever she can to be what? Part of his world. And she just belts out that ballad. And, is that the, 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 the it's a ballad? Yeah. Um, ballad. And, ballad. And it has weight and power and you can feel the emotion behind it. And she is now hooked. None of that with this because she's not she's not nearly as in love. And so it feels so hollow as to why did this moment right here make her suddenly wholly committed to be part of your world? Because you actually you're not as in love with him as you know. They don't show it, but when they're on the boat, they he is mimicking a lot of the same like ideals that she is, and she likes that. But then they don't actually they don't show it. You're right, they mm. change a whole bunch of stuff. But they do, when, when she's looking at him on the boat, they're talking about like, oh, he wants to make a better world. He wants to, you know, people, we can, we can all be friends. Thing, we can yeah. all be, you know, like, so. But, but he wasn't referring to fish people. He was just saying, I, I, yeah, we need to I adapt know. to the other colonies. And then basically. he runs to save the dog, which she, you know, likes, of course. I mean, it, nowhere near enough. And they really do not give emphasis or screen time to show her infatuated and head over heels in love mm. with him. Which, and which is why the song, To Be Part of Your World, rings hollow in that scene, because it doesn't feel like that, you know? It's like she's just... And then, so much so, the movie even seems to confirm this, because this is the scene where it shows Ursula spying on her, and Ursula's response is she's already in love with the human world. Like, hang, why would saving Eric make her in love with the human world. I originally, saving Eric made her more in love with him. She's up close. She sees how gorgeous he is. But now, now it's the human world. Why? Because they can't swim? Do you like his clothing? What's made you fall in love more with the human world in this interaction? It's just, so it falls flat. So many of the emotional beats in this film are so much less at, to the point of just falling flat because the narrative structure isn't there. And they've removed it. And so then she's like, then Ursula says, she's found her soulmate. It's like, no, you haven't really told, like, sold that at all. It's not really. Um, okay, okay. So uh, now Ariel is supposedly committed, going to be part of your world. And Sebastian really wants to convince her. No, no. How will he convince her? Well, he's going he's gonna to sing a song. Now, Originally, Sebastian was a composer, mm. and so it made sense that he could really just pull out a great song out of nowhere, and, and it made sense that Ariel could sing really well because she had a beautiful voice, and so she was a singer. Hence why he organized her birthday party. Yep. Yep. But now, Sebastian is just a counselor to the king. Yeah. But, and so, it's, and look, don't get me wrong, I know there are many other films where people aren't defined as being singers and everything, but it just actually had a bit more narrative sense in the original. Sebastian singing when, oh my gosh, I just realized they cut a song. What song? The chef's song when he tries to skewer Sebastian. They didn't try and cook Sebastian. They didn't try and cook Sebastian. Huh. So you know, oh, no. I, 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 he just escapes. Oh, what is this? How could I miss such a delicate and succulent crab? It was a fun song. Like, they get they injected crap new ones and actually cut one. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe we I mean, all forgot about that one too. That actually would have helped the narrative in this film because they wanted to make this film show like humans bad. You know the the conflict between land and sea. They that, showed the fish on the wall. In the wall. Yeah. That would have been the song and scene for that narrative and they cut it it's just a stupid movie man I'm adding that one just while I remember I can't believe that they cut that okay because uh, what got me there was I was trying to think was there anyone in the original who sung that wasn't actually a singer and then I, the, the chef came to my mind he was one but anyway under the sea Ariel we mentioned this sings along at parts with it and it's like no Ariel you're you're you're, you're against this opinion. You well, don't... it sounded worse. It just yeah. actually sounded worse. It, it did worse. sound worse, and it is contradictory in the way it's delivered in the story because Ariel is singing. In this one, she's singing along like she almost agrees with him. Under the, and she literally, it's the line, under the sea. She loves under the sea. She's getting along. So then, what, you, you're saying you, you want to stay under the sea, Ariel? In the animation, she like 
she's not into it. I think at one point she kind of started to bop along because the music is there, but then she just, it's like, checks out. See ya. Is a bit mystic. It's another change. Makes the film worse, makes the narrative worse, wasn't needed. And this one, I can only th throw to incompetence. I, I just thought, oh, we need Ariel to do something when she should have been just not, you know, following along. I already was wondering, like, you know, what's going on with the kingdom and the prince and stuff? Because the prince, like, it already, in that conversation, I think the prince mentioned that, you know, his mother took him in and was like, hang on. And I mean, the original film didn't even have his parents at all. Yeah, it was just the prince. Like, not that I, not that I don't think they existed. It's just like it didn't, yeah, it, it didn't well, require them. Yeah. The story does not require it. If now he has parents, we see his parents. We now, well, now is adopted because he doesn't look the same. <laughs> it's like, well, then why did you do that? But the thing is, we know that in the original movie, he wouldn't have been adopted because the kingdom was very different. Yes. It's just, I, I don't... This doesn't don't feel like it. a kingdom. It feels yeah. like a colony. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because like when they go down to the market, it's like a legit, just like a a market. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I'm sorry, princes don't really go down to those types of market on the shoreline with just random people mm -hmm. everywhere. So, yeah, going back, like so the injection of the parents, it, I could almost see a reason for it, but then making him adopted is pointless and literally there's there's no point just okay just make him black it would actually would have made more sense and so then they inject make sure that he's adopted is, uh, all right at this point I, yeah i was starting to get the um uh, clues that this isn't in denmark this is like and then when we see <laughs> we're not in denmark we're anymore, not in denmark boy. anymore um and then when we see the castle it looks like some type of colony castle mm -hmm. More appropriate to the location, good, but it doesn't have the gravitas or romanticism or or majesty at all. It, it actually looks like this squat kind of fortressy thing that's out of place for this romantic tale. Not only that, the whole island doesn't even look like a kingdom. It's yeah. like a little tiny it's island. It's a, a colony. It's yeah. a small little colony um, with not real. they call her queen, but she's really just, I don't know, a, the governor of this colony, you know, in the Car Caribbean on this made up island. And so it's a change that actually makes it, the film worse in the sense that there is not this romantic kind of majesty of this kingdom and prince and stuff. And so why? Well, they wanted to put the location, but this for me makes the film worse. It's lesser due to that change. And then they are. Ah, so the next thing is the Eric song. <laughs> Eric has a song. He was, he's been rescued by the mermaid and his, there's a walkway like path down from the squat castle they have along to the seashore that he's standing on. And he starts to sing this lovesick boyfriend. Didn't you like it, Nathan? No, I didn't. Why not? I could tell it was, it was not from the original. Right. And the auto tune was awful. I, like, that's interesting. So you knew I, instantly I could tell it wasn't. Because yeah. it's was, so out of place. There was no gravitas. It was just him mm -hmm. going, uh, or the, uh, we, 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 we. <laughs> like it was was bad and his voice was weak he didn't have the best voice for it either. and it was dark as well and it was it was dark. like twilight and and like so when we say dark like it's supposed to be imagine winter it's like winter weather in the in like all the time though and then when you're in the ocean it's just really dark you can't see things it's like that's i feel like yeah. the best way to describe it and at first, it kind of struck me with the song that they injected into the Aladdin remake, where um, Princess Jasmine is talking. I, don't know, singing I didn't about... watch it, Chad. Oh, because I don't want to watch something that's worse than the original. Yeah. I didn't watch the Lion King remake because I don't want to watch something that's worse than the original. I see. I haven't seen the. I Lion didn't want to watch the Little Mermaid remake because it's worse than but the original. But for the, this one, now we're doing it for our viewers. We are taking the pain and hits. Look in their eyes and say, "I did it for you." We're doing but... it for you. You're, I, and this is. This is a legitimate sacrifice on Tyrant's part. Look at how pained and scarred he is. I am no, because like usually when we go to watch a movie, like when we go watch The Flash or something, mm. like something we know is going to be bad. It's like, well, at least the story is going to be new, so I'm experiencing the first mm. time. Kind of like Nathan, he experienced it the first time, didn't like it, but he's mm. ambivalent. I knew the story, I know mm. the original, so I don't like it even more. I I am so happy you said that because I feel like you. I understand you. Because that's my experience with like Wheel of Time and things that yeah. I love. Uh, yeah. What your experience is uh, not only cultural vandalism, but a desecration of your childhood. That's why I usually just avoid these things. The yeah. only time I can't avoid them is when it's like Star Wars. And mm. even now, I'm just done. So, well, 
we're doing it as a sacrifice for our viewers. So you can get all the details of how garbage this is. So Eric's song does nothing to lift the film because it's a bad song. It's it's poorly written. It doesn't have uh, nearly the interesting lyrics, um, and it doesn't it doesn't feel integrated into the story nearly as well. And uh, the char- like, I did not care about his character in this. Like, the animation had more charm and personality, even though the animation probably had less screen presence and character. Like when I say characterization, time to show his character mm. in the movie, you feel like he had more character though in the animation compared to this. This one, he felt very flat and, uh, meh, you know, I don't see what Ariel sees in him. I, granted, Ariel doesn't, because he that, doesn't see much in me either in this right, version. I think the only scene I liked between the two of them was when they were in the study, like going through all his like st- Agreed. stuff. Agreed. And then looking at maps and stuff. Though that there, was a good scene. There's some dumb things in that scene, but yes. Yeah, but like, yeah, yeah. let's yeah. just gloss over all that, because like, there's so much dumb there stuff. Is. There is. Well, no, we're not glossing over anything, yeah. mate. Then it goes, this, this was a baffling Scene. I like I I uh, had to suppress a like an emotional sound of resent. So there was just a a, a boat that sunk, shipwreck you could say, right? And we see mermaids cleaning the debris that has sunk. First of all, odd that so much wood has sunk to the uh, bottom of the ocean. Isn't it wood float? Yeah, I. I um, I can get how ships sometimes sink because they have ballast in it, and if water gets in, and then especially if they got cargo, that can pull down and overcome the buoyancy of the wood. But the, this is broken fragments of wood on the bottom of the ocean, just there. So that's the first, huh? Like, like what? The humans are evil. They pollute yes! the ocean. Yes. But at, then, but at the same time, we want them to die, and we don't care if they have shipwreck. Yes. Like, yes. Um, this literally was the scene. Boat sunk, humans died, mermaids most affected. <laughs> like, <laughs> do keep in mind they want the boats to sink and they want them to die. They're like, yeah, let them die. Well, well Triton says they got what they deserve, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but they're complaining about the fallen debris damaging coral. This coral will take a thousand years to thing. And I'm like, I'm, thinking, I'm like, no, we're 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 literally like, there's literally countless projects around the world right now regrowing coral. It takes like twenty years. It doesn't take a thousand years. <laughs> And uh, I couldn't believe it. Like, h- humans have died, mermaids most affected. I just really, uh, same vibes of, uh, what, what was it, He Man um, Revelation or something, when He Man died and uh, he, and uh, he's having this conversation, it was so bad. He has a conversation with Teal, like, I died. And then she responds, and we had to live with it. It's like, they have to be the victims. Are you kidding me? That, it was just such a cringe bat. And this is a new scene, and it makes the mermaids look awful mm. like, like and then it's also feels i also don't understand why the princesses and king are, are cleaning, cleaning and, yeah yeah don't yeah, get me wrong there's I mean, confusion why, why, why is sebastian looking after ariel and why don't they have other mermen who can look after ariel instead i have questions with this i mean world. that was in the animation but the thing was in the animation he it wasn't was, he was more of like a friend like flounder a supervisor that he was happy to send in because he was already kind of in her confidence yeah mm. with Where this, in the movie it's like Go do this, Sebastian, because I'm too lazy to. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, so that there, there's a number of just dumb things in the in this scene, and it makes the mermaids sound really entitled. They're trying to go out of the way to be victims. I'm thinking, guys died on that ship, and Ariel tries to say, "I'm sure they didn't mean to, you know, have a shipwreck or sink." But then they brush off, like, "No, they're basically they're still awful because they're breaking us apart." And then I also like with sinking bits of wood. <laughs> it's dumb on multiple levels, and I, and I, and I get again. I think, why? Why did you add that scene in? What? Is, that's contributing nothing, and it is making the film worse. Okay, okay. So now Ariel swims away, and this scene is replacing the scene where she wakes up in the palace and has the little flower in her ear, and she's and she's humming along, being really happy. And uh, Trident is like, what's got her so happy? And the sisters go, isn't it obvious, Daddy? Ariel's in love. They replace that with some, it's it, it's uh, a uh, side kind of remark about, oh, she's going to go see some guy. Yeah. And and no beha- the, uh, Ariel has no behavior at all showing that she is in love. Yeah. She just got angry and left. Yeah, yeah. 
And so this should not make Triton nearly as suspicious as a result. Yet he somehow latches onto that last flippant offhand remark. It's like, don't you know? Yeah, but do remember, she was angry about the human world. So why would you assume that she's in love with some... Yeah, like... exactly. <laughs> make... So, again, a change that undermines an important narrative plot point in the story. Before, she was infatuated, she was humming, she had, you know, she's been twitterpated as... Um, uh, if everyone seen Bambi, you know, know what I'm referring to. Have you guys seen classic Bambi? I'm cultured. Triton, he is going to interrogate... Um, interrogate Sebastian and the scene doesn't have nearly as much weight because before Triton was actually like, gee, who could the lucky merman be? And then he puts on a front of seriousness, like, come on, Sebastian, you know, in this, it's just, it's flat. Uh, The scene does not work really as nearly as much. The Triton doesn't have the intimidate, intimidating presence to make, um, uh, Sebastian actually, justified in feeling so afraid because in the animation he like sebastian is sweating and then when uh, triton goes you know is she in love and makes him snap it's like i told her it was wrong humans are bad humans are evil and triton's like you know what humans and the anger is there in the animation in this it's, it's got nothing like that it's just like when he breaks he just spouts like oh i told her not the lines and nah and by the way they also they missed the scene of him scolding Ariel for going to the surface world because um, uh, when she's trying to explain why she was late in the animation, that's when Sebastian comes in and tries to save her. And then there was a seagull. This is this, that is that. And Triton snaps seagull. That means you went to the surface world. I command you not. She didn't go to the surface in this one. And so the rule breaking wasn't nearly as severe. The anger wasn't there. And the interesting thing about... Um, the animation. Triton was really stern in it, but he had more justified reasons. And Ariel was breaking more significant rules, making Triton more angry. And so you can actually see that there. This, there isn't, she is not breaking a severe rules. Triton does it like, it's just not being sold and you don't feel that nearly as much. And so missing that scene going to the surface and then Triton snapping at her um, as much, you know, is another point I'll add. And so now Triton, now this is when he goes to Ariel's collection of stuff. And I remember the animation, right? I, I, like that scene when Triton, like He's destroying everything. Yeah. When he, even when he appears, right? I can still remember some of my emotional reaction, like as a kid, when he arrives and he is, he, he now sees this, like how much he's been breaking the rules and he is livid. Daddy. I consider myself a reasonable merman. I set certain rules, and I expect those rules to be obeyed. And I, and as a kid, it was intimidating. I felt that. I think he's, he's here, and he just starts shooting things. And, and, and before, it felt like a very serious kind of consequence for you objectively breaking my commands as your father trying to protect you. I, I tried and just, just not work for me. This film, he just felt so flat. And so I didn't feel the anger. There wasn't an underlining sense of justification on Triton's behalf. And then when the breaking of the statue, because the statue to me, I didn't connect that with Eric. didn't look like Eric wasn't there. And then there is a moment in the animation that I always remember. And so when Triton is leaving the thing and he looks back and he almost has a look of regret and sadness on him mm. that he, he knew even in that moment he went too far. Mm. In this, I was watching closely. There's none of that regret. He just leaves. Yeah, he just leaves. He just leaves. And so that's what I mean. So I'm adding that there because it's a change that worsens this um, adaptation, right? And it's an example of how these live action characters have less character and feel less real and emote less than the animation. It's it's, it's shocking, and and just shows how bad this this movie is. Of course, there is that line in this scene. When Ariel says, um, sorry, Triton says, he's a mermaid, you're a mermaid, he's a human. And she says, that doesn't make us enemies instead of I love you. So again, removing the the love story, it's undermining the narrative and uh, it doesn't have nearly as much emotional kind of weight because love is a strong emotion. 
and especially for a young girl like Ari- Ariel is in the, in the film. And so, and then there's a line and I can't remember where she says like, you know, her dad is controlling everything or da- their dad is controlling everything we say and do. Actually, I think that might've been from Ursula. Daddy yeah. is controlling everything we say and do. And also Ursula and uh, Trident weren't brother and sister. No, they weren't. They're, they're now brother and sister. I those. don't know if I like or hate this change. Like, like yeah, I'm wondering really, why. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make it better yeah, exactly. or worse, but it's kind of, it adds an interesting dynamic. I mean, no, because she she's not a mermaid. What happened to her? If she's not a, yeah, if, if she's his I brother mean, and sister now, she could be a mermaid. Is he a mermaid though? He's like magic now. He can just <laughs> do all this different magic. Come back from the dead. Like that one. We'll so, get there. We'll get there. That one. Yeah. I, so, I mean, her being a, I think, a octopus, well, she, he can give legs to Ariel. I mean, it's not that far-fetched. Maybe. May, uh, still, I just, I think it makes it worse because you now have the question of why is she a, uh, like before she was just a witch, an evil witch, and so there's a different type of creature in the sea, and she's uh, an octopus. Makes sense. Now she's the sister. Why is she an octopus? Doesn't make sense. So I don't like that change. Um, they uh, the the eels make a like magical portal thing for her to talk through. Interesting enough, I swear in the in the original film the eels talk. And they were very they did. slippery and like I mean, yeah. this they don't talk at all. Like when they come in, they're like, poor yeah, yeah. girl. The sea witch has great powers. And they convince her to yeah. go to the sea witch. Now they don't say a thing. Yeah. And so guess what? They have less character. And therefore, when they get fried, the emotional reaction of my poor boopsies yeah. is not there. Mm. It has no weight at all. I uh, because they did they weren't given characters. It's a change that makes it worse. There's another, and I, I consider that a big one because they had personality and there was interactions, more more affectionate interactions in the animation between those eels and Ursula than in this. And then the film wants us to feel the same sadness that Ursula has in this when they die, and they don't, it's not there. Uh, so good, good one to catch that one because I, I actually missed it, but you're absolutely right. Uh, and so I'm definitely adding that. And so instead of them convincing her to go to Ursula, Ursula is just speaking through a magical portal, a magic, magic portal. And then she goes to speak with them. And uh, to me, the reveal of Ursula didn't work nearly as well. Well, hold on. Let's talk about it. First off, we get to see, I'm a sucker for like sea monsters. So when we got to see like mm-hmm. the giant, uh, like a uh, uh, live Pluridon or whatever they're called, mm-hmm. uh, I like that. I was like, oh, that's cool. But uh, it also, it adds to the thing of like, okay, so you've got two eels. They made some sea witch who's supposed to be evil. So they're taking you to see her and you're literally swimming into the jaws <laughs> of a sea monster. Yep. So like, I mean, it's a bit on the nose. Mm-hmm. And not only that, there, like there's a moment when like, if you do not get clued off that she is evil beyond redemption, mm-hmm. you are a moron yeah. in the film. They could have gotten away because she didn't know what these weird creatures were. Yeah, yeah. By the way, we see those weird. Uh, they're they're a different yeah. interpretation of the creatures, uh, but they're a garden. They're, they're even she, worse. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're cr- more creepy. Yeah. So Ursula has her garden in the animation. Those were cursed uh, merfolk that failed her contract in, in thing, and they got cursed into that form. So when they, you didn't when, know that, it's pretty messed that, up. That's a, it's a big. Thing because when she dies, they all get they all turn back. They all get free. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. so big in the animation, when Ariel breaks the contract, she starts to get turned into one of those creatures, and then Triton signs the contract to take the consequence for her, and he gets turned into one of those creatures instead. So he becomes one of the, her garden, right? This is an important, really important, because in the film, well, yeah, I get, it's not there at all, no. and so they show her garden. And then the garden has no no significance or payoff at all for the rest of the film. It's a change which is stupid and makes the film worse. It's another one on the list. Well, it was a pointless change. Yeah, a pointless. Literally pointless. Well, no, it made it worse because of what happened to Triton and the uh, ending payoff. Because there's no logic to it now. Before, it made sense because Ursula and her power curse these people. When she dies, her power dies, the curse is lifted. Then Triton returns to normal. What happens to Triton makes no sense due to this change. And we'll be more specific when we get there. There's an, oh, do you know they cut something in that song as well? What? So when Ursula reveals that she has to give her voice, yeah. and she, there's a moment in the song where she actually sings about 
Men don't like a woman who's a blather. She like you know, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. just your voice. They cut that entirely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a bit more PC. Yeah. Well, well, but what's bizarre is like the they go out of their way to kind of make you know the dad armor um, is. That, that's what I mean. Well, with the kiss the girl, they mm. also added or cut a line. I can't remember mm. where what it which, which way around it was, but I know that a line was different. When I heard it, I'm like, that's not the right line. Yeah. We've changed something. Well, there. what's weird is that. The PC crowd love showing, oh, m bad misogynist men. And, and they go out of the way, but like, Triton is not letting her speak. And they, and they have a line from Ursula's like, daddy isn't letting her speak. And then at the very end, Triton even confirms that. It's like, you know, uh, I took away her voice or something. I, I have the line written down. And so the line of men not letting women speak, the, the concept men not, is there. And so there's an underlining, you know, plot point of misogyny that Ariel must overcome. And so that makes it really weird then. This song, is, like this moment of the song is actually like playing up that, you know, there's misogyny world, but did they remove it because Ursula was doing it sarcastically in a sense that she was trying to trick Ariel that not all men actually like that. And so therefore coming from an unreliable narrator in Ursula, that therefore is not true. And they removed it because they like, they can't undermine. No, no, no. Like, is that why they removed it? Because I can't think of any other reason. See, I didn't read too much into any of this source. I like, I, I read the Rotten Tomatoes review where someone said that it was like some big feminist thing, and I'm like, okay. Well, when when I went in watching the film, I noticed a few lines changed, but it wasn't until the the penultimate bit where mm. I was like, okay, okay, I see the narrative, yeah, okay, and they're a bit more because yeah, they are not as blatant well, they, in the film, but until the end, the end is like the end is like just dumb. Yeah, yeah, it's dumb, uh, and so. There is this narrative more subtextually throughout the film, okay? And there's moments from it. Most people probably won't notice it. Won't, it it, it is in the more it. harmless territory that... Especially if you haven't seen the original. Yeah. Like Nathan, like, you're not even going to notice Yeah, did it. you even pick up on any of that? Like On what? On the, no mis <laughs> on the misogyny bad narrative yeah. throughout the film. So you, you did pick it up. Tell. Yeah, it's there. Um, so you don't, yeah, you don't even need the you contrast need to, to see. Um, and so, okay... I was just thinking, like, why did they cut the um, moment when, yeah, Ursula starts singing about, me, you know, yeah, men don't want you to talk anyway. So that was weird. And then they do something. This is back. This is one of the stupidest changes in the film, which undermines the point of the story. Ariel now doesn't know she needs to be kissed. Mm. I, I was like, what? So to... Become a human forever, she must be kissed. That's the part of the contract. Okay? And now, in, in this adaptation, Ursula talks to her eels and literally says she's not going to win because I added something extra into that spell. She isn't even going to remember what she has to do. What's, uh, what I hate about... that I hate it for a number of reasons. It undermines the plot. But on a small side, right, one of the... Uh, Elements, plot points of the original thing was that the contract she made was unbreakable because the conditions were clear on both sides. And so the condition of the contract, therefore, was important that the terms were understood and must be kept. Now, there is something in that that is literally preventing Ariel from filling her side of the contract. I can tell you that, that should make the contract void. If there is some type of ethereal magic force that is enforcing this contract to the point that Triton couldn't even destroy the contract with his own power because there is a greater power that says, you make an agreement, it must be held. Just so Nathan understands context. They, when they make that deal, uh, she can she knows she has to kiss mm. and also the, it's much more fair. Like you, act, They're actually mm. about yeah. to do it. However, Ursula ends up doing the same sort of trick thing she does mm -hmm. in the film. But then when they, uh, Triton goes to attack her, like it did in the film, she pulls out the actual contract. And the contract is unbreakable. Yeah. Instead so, of her just like magic powers. In the yeah. film, she just holds up her hand as a magical protector. Yeah. In the animation, there's actually a physical contract that Ariel signs with a quill. Okay. And she pulls that out at the end to protect her against Triton trying to destroy her and it and, the, and he can't break the contract. And so there's an actual plot point of a greater power reinforcing the conditions of the contract. It's completely undermined by Ursula actually just doing whatever she making wants. whatever the hell she wants now. I think it's just Disney afraid of contracts and <laughs> following them. They don't want that in. Yeah, that's true. Like Disney, they love <laughs> breaking, breaking contracts. contracts. <laughs> oh, what? No, 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 no. We can do what we want. That is hilarious. Oh my gosh. Um, 
so I hate it. It's all it's like, like that was actually an interesting plot point uh, that they've now subverted completely. And on top of that, it breaks the plot of the story. Ariel now doesn't even know that she needs to be kissed. And I'm thinking, why? Like genuinely, why? Is it problematic that this girl wanted to be kissed by a guy? Is that the reason? That's what I was thinking about before. It's like, we tell young boys now not to pursue women because it's creepy. But then, no, we also don't want women to pursue men. So just... <laughs> they just don't want people to... Yeah. Just die out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's so dumb. And this shouldn't be the problematic thing. I thought it was problematic when a guy was trying to kiss a girl without consent. But they removed Ariel wanting to do it, which now makes the song Kiss the Girl actually creepy. Mm. Because... She legitimately doesn't want to get kissed. In, I don't know if she doesn't want to, but she's... She, she, I, she didn't seem opposed to it towards the end, yeah. but the beginning of it where, you know, yeah, we need to kiss Ariel, kiss Ariel, she was completely oblivious to that intention. She didn't want it. And so the whole kiss the girl is like, kiss this naive girl who doesn't know what's going on. And so if if the more, you know progressive kind of crowd is concerned about narratives of consent and, and things like that. This is way more problematic than what was before. Before Ariel wanted him to kiss her and she was encouraging him, trying to lead in and getting frustrated when he was not doing it. Now she's oblivious and everyone's like, kiss her. <laughs> it's like, what? I don't care. But this is the type of stuff that they would be objecting about. And, but they're not. They're just like, what? And then, of course, it, it, it undermines the plot. Because she needs to get kissed and she doesn't even know about it now. It's, it's like, it's so dumb. I think it's also dumb because all the other characters know she needs to kiss him. And so they can just yeah. tell her anyways and they just force onto her. So it doesn't actually change exactly. anything. But she the stakes aren't high. Say she it. forgets. Yeah, every, but... e even when they tell her, now she will forget that she needs to be kissed. And so the crab and the, and the fish but the way and they, the bird the way are they like, we've got to get her kissed. But the problem is the way they betray it is so stupid. Like, Nathan, yeah. say something to me. Hello. That's how they portray it in the film. As soon as they mention it to her, she just, just off in did, the clouds. Yeah, it makes yeah. it look like Ditsy Airhead yeah. kind of thing. And I was like, it's such a dumb, unnecessary, when I say it's unnecessary, but it makes the film worse. Like, this is a problem narratively now in terms of motivations and trying to get there, where Ariel, what is she trying to achieve? Because I'm pretty From sure her perspective, what is she trying to achieve now? She's just chilling. Yeah. She's not doing anything. She has, there's no urgency for her. She doesn't, I gotta make sure the spell is confirmed everything. It's just scuttle, flounder, and whatever, making sure she gets kissed without her consent or knowledge that that's what she wants. I mean, they wrote it that way, not me. <laughs> this film is dumb. It's legitimately stupid. She gets turned into a human, and in the animation, did Scuttle, no, not Scuttle, did Flounder and Sebastian swim in and grab it and, and pull her up to the surface? I thought that's yeah, what did. happened. They did. In she, this, they she, don't. She starts to drown straight away. And they, they save her. Yeah. In this, she just starts, she swims. Like, oh, oh. I don't like the change because it showed the care that, you know, a Flounder and Sebastian had for her. In this, she just, and it's a long way to the surface as well. And I just wasn't buying that, what, she can swim to the surface without any help. There's also uh, what is it? decompression it. sickness. Yeah, that as well. Just saying. I mean, okay, and then and then um, in the animation, they kind of just cut to her washing up on the ocean. Yes. And, and, no, isn't isn't Sebastian like almost exhausted yes. beyond death? Though? So they pulled her to the sur the yeah, shoreline the and shoreline. saved her. In this one, she she well, she doesn't even make it to the shoreline. But Sebastian is just basically like, oh, you got to do it yourself, and. Um, you know, Which, to be fair, makes sense. Like, a crab cannot pull me to shore. I mean, but, I think Flounder could have helped a bit more. But, but we are a, fish. a bit a suspension of the belief, you know, with the whole I, mermaids I, and octopus witches I, stuff. You've had, a, you've had a fish Flounder side on the end of your rod. They can pull. Like, there's some force that they can generate there. Mm. Aha! Logic! <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. What I, I didn't I like. doubt a fish could push me because in the ocean. If there's any forward force and not too much counter, it will eventually pull you forward. Like, eventually. Yeah. But, I mean, 
Fernando was tiny at this. He was do, tiny. Do, do remember how much uh, force you exert is okay, proportional okay. to your body. So maybe they could push you a little bit, they, but then they're going to stop. Yeah, like, yeah. They, they could have found a dolphin and asked for help or something. Like, or they could have done like what they did in the original mermaid, which is she was on the rocks, drank a potion, and then she got legs. Oh, well, there we go. Solves all the problems. <laughs> so what I didn't like is like, it looks like she's struggling and drowning and she's in the middle of the ocean and the, the ma- people who made this film, they don't understand the concept that um, just because we as an audience can't see it doesn't mean the, in char- the character in the scene can't see it because from the perspective of the audience, the fourth wall, suddenly she gets scooped up in a net and there's a boat right in front of her that no one reacted or responded to. It was just appeared out of nowhere as soon as she gets scooped up. Something else to, uh, to add is in the original animation when she gets her legs, she starts to drown because she's yeah, she doesn't yeah. know how to swim because she's a she had a fish tail the whole time. In this one, she can swim like a human, like us, mm-hmm. straight off the bat. But she can't walk. Yeah. She can't yeah. Walk. <laughs> and I love how they call, keep calling it gravity as well. Gravity's keeping me yeah. down. <laughs> like really, you know about gravity? Oh my gosh! So, all right, the guy who scoops her up. Okay. Why, like. It's because of plot, but there's no just for a reason in the world that I've seen them do this. He's like, I'll take you to the castle. Why? No, no, no. The, obviously, he's like, take it to the village, help her out. Or why, do the, why does the king and queen need to know? Is it because they had... I don't think he knew about the mandate to find the um, missing... Because Eric is trying to find the girl who saved him. Okay? Um, but not only do they take her to the castle then, they decide to uh, give her a full-blown makeover and give her a fancy... This doesn't... You know why... Originally, it was the prince that found her. And because he found her, he felt a sense of ownership over her. And so he'll take her to the castle, make sure she's safe. Responsibility, not ownership. Responsibility. Responsibility. (laughs) I didn't mean that. Yeah, yeah, sure. (laughs) At least you caught it. (laughs) But no, like it made sense narratively in the animation why she was brought to the castle. In this, bonkers. It's stupid. She wouldn't be brought to the castle. Well, no, she is because reasons. She's given a fancy room. She's given a full makeover. And the reason why the prince finds her is because he's out at the shore looking for her every yes. day. Yes. Why did they change it? I have no idea. It's like, it, like, I don't see what, like, just to have her wash up and shore up the prince finds her, it would have been so easy and, and, and then made sense that she's in the castle. They removed it. Now it just makes no sense. This is what I mean about they have the, so many of the changes break fundamental plot points in the film, which just makes it stupid. And how many ones have we shown already? Like objective, here's an example, and here's another one, and we're not dumb. Uh, sorry, <laughs> we're, 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 not, we're not done. Because um, my gosh, there, this is where we have the, um, the thought song. Yeah. Mm. So you see, they want more musical numbers, but because of the story, she doesn't have a voice. So they do one inside her head. Why? I don't know. Yeah. They, they, it's so weird. It's like I would have much preferred the chef. Yeah, the I chef, reckon that would be really. The funny chef scene action. would have been great, but and they still wouldn't have done it better as the animation because yeah. they can't do anything as good as the animation I, as shown. But yeah, like, and it, the the talent who have ever wrote this song is not nearly as good as the writing of the original songs, and it just feels out of place, you know? You can tell that they are, this, the, the new songs are different, because they're using words and phrases that aren't, like, mm. they're different. The prince comes in, because after she's got the dress on and stuff, and he, I don't know, did, did it seem like he was thinking, this could be the girl, but oh no, you don't have a voice, so you can't be her? And it yes. Is? Yep, that was it. Maybe this is a criticism of the animation as well. I just like, you do realize maybe it is the same girl. She's just, you know, lost her voice. She went through a traumatic thing. Like I thought in the movie, he was much more like, it could be her. But she doesn't have a voice. So it can't be her. Like he was, he was very. Yeah, in the animation. Yeah, he was very about. tossing it up. In this, mm-hmm. it was like, oh, you don't have a voice. It's not you then. Bye. No, yeah. Basically, yeah. like the prince actually has no interest in her in the first, first meeting. Animation, he found her. He thinks it could be her from the beginning. And is interested right off the bat. Which also makes why her siren song is more sinister. Because then it makes it seem like it was just the, the song, song and the magic that yeah. a siren song has. Which is... Because also the animation, 
he kind of saw a blurry image when he was mm. opening his eyes of her. Yeah. And so... Which they, have... they do this as did well. They? Okay, they okay. do this as well, but like, it doesn't have, it, it doesn't add anything. They don't need, mm. it's always the song. They don't need, because he does have that blurry yeah. image. They basically have him shown that he has no belief that this is the girl that saved her. It's, it's not her at all. And so she's like, oh, okay, well, you're staying in the castle, see ya. Again, it's a pointless change that makes it worse as a result. She starts to look around um, uh, the castle and she goes into a study, into his study. And she's like, like fancy things and stuff. And the context of uh, this, right, has a certain implication. You have, it does. It does. <laughs> and that's what I didn't like. Because <laughs> you have a washed up, you know, um, uh, I don't know what you call them, like, whatever, some vagabond, what, uh, it washed up, who's now suddenly in the castle, and the first thing you see him is poking around your study, holding something yeah. valuable. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You'd be like, hang on, excuse me, it looked like she got caught in the act of yeah, stealing. it did. It did. It very much did. But he's like, oh, you like that, do you? Yeah. yeah. You can keep it. And then they start interacting and showing different things. And I did, like, because you even Tyrant pointed out, Showing kind of like a joint interest there. He's interested in see things and she's interested in it. Like showed some type of similarity in personality, which I think is a workable thing. But some of the things that he was trying to show off were dumb. Like, I have this fossilized sea rock. <laughs> and they go out of their way in the, in the scene to show that there's actually nothing remarkable about it. That's what's inside. Why... The whole reason why smashing it and showing, I don't know, some geode crystals inside was significant because that wouldn't be significant if the outside had any value at all. And he was like, how did you know? And I'm like, why did you bother keeping it? It's a rock. <laughs> then he starts to show her maps. And that's when he's like, okay, they're near the kingdom of Brazil. They say, like, all right. Brazilian. Brazil. It's, uh, they, yeah, the Brazilian empire yeah. specifically. And I'm like, okay, they are definitely in the Caribbean. Mm. It's, look, there are some problematic things happening during this period in the colonies around let's, this area. Let's just gloss past it all, Shad. <laughs> we just gloss past it like, uh, you know, yeah. You right, Nathan? Cool. <laughs> Shad was building up to something. I was like, oh. Then, yeah, we've just, we've historical done. accuracy. Uh, yeah. you know, it's, <laughs> this movie isn't I'm not saying, Yeah, I'm not saying, look, there's a kid's film. And I'm not saying it should be in there as well. It's just, yeah. Is it though? Like, is it a kid's film? It's quite... Like, when I think of a kid's film, they're always so colourful yeah. and fun and uplifting. This yeah, wasn't really yeah, fun, it wasn't, wasn't fun. that uplifting, and it was very visually dark. So what you're saying, we should actually address the uh, problematic location. <laughs> no, no, I'm not. <laughs> he wants a carry, because the ending conversation of that is like, he shows the island, I'd love to show the island, she'd love to see the island that they're on, and is like, oh, I'll get you a carriage. Oh, my lord, we're using all the carriages to look for this stranded girl that you think. I'm thinking... Why do you need carriages to look at the shoreline? Great question. To send that empty carriage. Yeah, I was, I was like, <laughs> if you're if you're a woman, step aboard. <laughs> yeah, like, the carriages, and they show the type of carriage. Yeah. It, it, it's like a, a fancy, you know, like um, two seater, two seater yeah. carriage. It's not something you would use for search and rescue yeah. or search shorelines at all. And so that plot point was dumb. I do like. I did like. Uh, the 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 gut the butler guy the governor guy. He, I didn't mind him. He was he was yeah. good. He was seemed um, like a bro. I think he did not look like the butler from uh, the butler from the animation had this really kind of strong hooked nose and just like got the pipe and. Um, I thought it worked fine. Uh, I think like, I heard what, the queen I, I, prime minister or something. Yeah, that's as why well. I said governor. Well. Yeah, in isolation, I think I I could give a compliment to the character, but because I have a point of reference. He does not remind me of the character he's supposed to be at all. But he was the, he was the, out of all the characters, I was, I was like, yeah, okay, he, I like His him. personality yeah. was He kicks well away enough. the ring, yeah, you know, yeah, he's yeah, like, he's are you sure, it, dude, yeah. like, you want to marry this random chick you he met last night? Like, yeah, he's, yeah, I agree. You sure you want to send out all the carriages? We can spare one. We can spare yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, so, he's he, was, he was a bit of a bro, yeah. and that's good, and in isolation, I think I could like him more, but again, I just, I didn't see who he was supposed to be. Um, okay, so, then there riding along the island they, ha they uh, come across some um, villages people having some market time well lovely time so coconuts she met she's close to eating food but not i just remember the, they had a line before where they were saying how 
uh, they were awful to coconuts. Yeah, they because every time a human grabs me, they smash Smashed it to pieces. The bird said as they ate fish just before who were living creatures. Yeah. And your friends. <laughs> like What do you have against fish? Scuttle. Um So this is her thing like, look, I didn't hate I to me the scene was just not great, not it didn't make the film worse, it didn't make it better, but it was the scene to make it, oh, human people are so fun. Mm. I'm glad to be human. Eat a flower. Though what I what made the question mark for me is then she starts to dance. And I'm like, when the hell did she learn to dance? I thought she could barely walk, but she's dancing now. Remember, the, the whole story takes place over a three-day period. Yeah, yeah. And she's dancing. She's doing the dancing. I'm like, I just feel like dancing. I feel like is dancing. It, movie is dumb. Scuttle has this genius idea. Not that it would have been just appropriate or normal. It would have been perfectly fine for the prince to go, that was nice. Would you go for a, would you like to go on a little boat, you know, um... What do you call that? Not an outing, like a, a lagoon date, just a date lagoon. Lagoon sail, it's small. Yeah. It's not, but they don't have sails. A lagoon row, like a rowing a rowboat date. Rowboat date. Row and chill. Yeah, he could lagoon have done. And chill. He could have done that. That's what was in the animation. We'll just yeah go on a row date, right? Well, the whole point was like she knew that she needed to needed. Kiss him. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But Scuttle's plan is if I steal his hat and just dump it in the boat, that will ensure them. Going on a row date. Well, it did. So it, it, I guess it, it worked, worked, but I like the through line and logic and like any guarantee that that would work is just so thin. It's like, when, you didn't need it. Well, I mean, when I'm at the beach and a seagull steals my one chip, I chase after it for a couple of miles. <laughs> I want that chip. <laughs> it's your hat. I, I could see you chasing it. Like, it was an unnecessary change. They could have just said, hey, see the boat. Would you like they, to go they, for a little? They said it in the, in the, in the little, the scene that I liked. They said, oh, there's a beautiful lagoon here. I'll go and show you the lagoon. Like, You're right. <laughs> we, so this, this show, they seem to forget their own setups and payoffs then. It's just, oh, they, competent writing, competent writing. Um, and so then they, uh, the, the kiss the girl scene, and we've already mentioned it. It's odd. She doesn't want to be kissed. And though they almost do at the end and they still have the eels knock them over. Um, and Ursula getting angry that, ah, she almost did it even without the voice, blah, blah, blah. Well, even then we had, uh, the, how, how he learns her name is different. Like in the that original thing, uh, I didn't Sebastian. Hate it. Really? I mean. Really? He shouldn't be able to understand animals. She should. She's a mermaid is one of their things. So you think sitting there and saying, what's this? And then like, and like playing with your lips every time until you sound it out. Yeah, right. look, it does sound dumber when you explain it like that. Yeah. So, because he then points a crab out yeah. that is singing, going, Ariel, her name is Ariel. Uh, because he, he points out the constellation and he must have pointed out Aries. Yeah, that's what you call me. And Aries. then she points, like, my name is Aries. He's like, Aries. And she's like, uh, and then she, she's like, Ari, I, hang on, Ari, Ari. I don't, yeah, I don't know how that Getting to L takes a while. It does, it does, <laughs> it does. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you think it should be added to the list unnecessary changes? Yeah, that dumb. was not. I did not like that. All right, it all was right. uncomfortable. Yeah. Um. If <laughs> you started playing, I don't know. You what is that game? Uh, I don't know. Um, my, where you mime it out? Where mm. she's like, she points Aries, and she's like, hmm? <laughs> first half, first half, like, and then <laughs> the, one word, one word. <laughs> so so many syllables. Something I didn't like actually that I wanted to mention was when she first gets rescued by the prince in the animation, she's not, like, when they're talking to her, she's, like, saying yes and no to things. Mm -hmm. In this, for, like, the first half, once she becomes yeah, human, right. he doesn't even, like, answer people. There's barely interaction. Yeah. And They'll in this say something to her, and she'll just, you are, nothing. Because in this scene, she actually nods or shakes her head, yes. and I was I actually like, oh, she's communicating now. Yeah. It, it stood out because she had been doing none of it before. Yeah. You're right. That's adding, that's going on the list. That's a dumb change that was unnecessary and made the film worse. Um, and so this is where Ursula is like, I'm taking the thing into my own hands and she's going to turn into the, um, the sea witch, whatever. I the, the... was, so the next scene, yeah, when mm -hmm. he, er, Eric finds Ursula, mm -hmm. I thought they were going to make her a pale white skinned girl with red hair. <gasps> I thought that that's what they were going to do. How dare they? Yeah. They, I was oh, like, I was wow. waiting for the next thing. I'm like, okay, I've got to see Ursula in like the daylight now. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I thought that's what they, they didn't do that. It but... was, uh, say, like 
that was actually an appropriate casting for the, what the character was supposed to look like at that point. Like pale skin, dark hair with a, uh, you know, both alluring yet possibly sinister. And she did a good job. Whoever actress, I don't know who she was, but I mean, that's the type of casting we want for the main character. Ah, so they can do it when they want to. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. And then the scene where Scuttle informs Ariel of the marriage is the song, the ear rape song, the um, Scuttle awful voice the rap. rap. It's a rap. So damn out of place. It's awful. Awful. I don't know. Um, Addy, that's so, it's so, uh, it was so bad and it made it, it, it was unenjoyable. Every time we go to the cinema, me and Nathan go, was that really loud for you? Like, was that film really <laughs> yes. loud? Yes, it was. Is it just us, Shad? Was the film very loud? I didn't notice. I like loud. I want to go to a different cinema and see whether it's that one specifically yeah. or if I'm just getting old and I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, it's too damn loud. So if we're going on like movies that we like, like even like John Wick, where yeah. we like it and we go, oh man, this is loud. Imagine going to the... <laughs> You're watching <laughs> Little Mermaid with that rap. Yeah, it's very loud. So uh, Ariel thinks uh, from Scuttle's thing that she, he's going to be marrying her, though it's not nearly as clear because in the original, he announces like, it's going to be a wedding and it's going to be you. And this is like your marriaging material or something in the rap and it just did not make sense. Something weird. Anyway... Her assumption is still the same that there's a marriage and it's gonna be and she goes down and is there with the sea witch girl. Ariel is sad. They in the animation, Eric was fully hypnotized. He's like, Yes, I'm in love with her. We yeah. shall be I'm proud of we shall be happy, blah blah. In this one, he's like, I I think I mean, I don't know. And then the sea witch is like, Yes, we're getting married. What I don't like about this is like if I walked in and you started talking like that, I'm like, hey, you know, how are you feeling? You're like, I don't know. What am I doing? What are I'd be like, are you all right, mate? You like, Even are now, you okay? I'm like a bit tired. You're like, Nathan, are you okay? Yeah. Do you need some right, water? Mate? Are you all right? And so if someone's hypnotized, obviously, yeah, you're going to call them yeah. out on that. And so they changed it for this version and it it feels less sincere and authentic. And why would anyone eat the... It, he looks like he's drugged. He's like completely off his head. And the bro butler is like... Uh, I I thought you were gonna, you know, we talked about this like last night. Why aren't yeah. you with Ariel? And he's like, I don't know. And he's like, Are you all right? Like, are you sure yeah. everything? Are you sure about this? Yeah, they try and sell that. You know, it's sudden. He wants to marry this girl, but it's the girl of your dreams, and and she saved you, and that's the reason why. And everyone's okay with it. And look, it was a bit weird in the animation, yet because they don't explain it, you kind of just chalk it up to the sea witch magic. Maybe she hypnotized everyone because they explore this more and they show the characters interacting. It feels like more objection should be given. Yeah. Um, Ariel runs off. She's sad. She is uh, sitting by the ocean. Scuttle flies, and then, and then he hears um, a sea witch singing with uh, through the thing and the reflection. Basically, uh, it, it shows a different angle, but it's basically the same you know stuff that happens. Scuttle goes to tell her, and so. The mar this is where I've already mentioned it's dumb. The marriage is now at the castle, not on a boat. Ariel finds out that she needs to stop the wedding and she dives into the water. And I'm thinking, what? He has legs. <laughs> you, got, you got legs. Why are like, what's funny? We literally see the castle up a pathway to her side. That's the area you need to go, Ariel. And she dives into the water. <laughs> she what? <laughs> this movie's dumb. What baffles me about these things? Did they have anyone with any sense of reason be a part of the filming process who could have said, you do realize, like, it's that way? Yeah. <laughs> Just anyone? I feel like we keep asking this exact same question every time we go watch a movie, Chad. Yeah, yeah. I'm tired of asking this question, Chad. <laughs> Just magic now. It's no, all no, just magic. Incompetence. Why did she dive into the water? Magic. Incompetence. Um, you right, Nathan? Mm. Okay, okay, so there's a weird moment where Scuttle has um, uh, Sebastian, and Sebastian's like, I will tell you when to drop me, and then it, it just drops him then. And, I'm, and then it's like, well, I guess I have to do it on my own. And I'm thinking, you could just go and pick him up. You're a bird, you fly. Like, why? Why? But no, and it's a weird scene. To, I, I don't know why it was because they didn't want like Sebastian to be at the wedding to help out or something. So dumb addition, pointless. Then 
Sebastian does get there, and now this is where they try and steal now, the necklace. Now, if my memory serves, I could be wrong because I haven't watched this in a very long time. The animals attack her like they do, but they get the pendant from her. I don't remember Ariel and Ursula getting into like they don't. They, yeah, fight. you're right. What happens? This was like a heroic moment for all the animals that want to help out. So yeah. Scuttle basically makes a call, and then I think you see, like, I don't know, is it seals? They, they head pop up, and and they rally all the animals to attack the boat, and the animals jump on the boat, and and she gets like, you know, what, what, what starfish is slapping her in their face, and it's a bit comical where these animals are just slapping her around to get the thing off her. In this one, it's Scuttle just tries to fly at her, poke at her. The dog starts to get caught. Ariel arrives and actually wrestles Ursula for the pendant. It was horrible. It was awful. And and everyone just stands aside and watches. And like, <laughs> I mean, I would be. I'd be like, like drama. But, but this is a, like, it's a wedding. And you have some random washed up urchin girl running and attacking the bride. And no one tries to stop her. You gotta remember, this is the this is the first time they're all meeting the bride as well, you know. Not like, only that, Eric tries to go in and stop her, and people restrain him. Oh. And like, no, 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 you're not gonna stop the girl fight. We gotta watch. <laughs> what? Let the strongest woman win. You'll pick her. <laughs> it's bizarre. And they could have easily done it where there wasn't enough time. She bursts in and there's a quick scuffle, but nothing like cat like drags out like it did, where she snatches a thing and smashes. Uh, the pendant. But in this, they're actually pulling each other. Eric's being held back. It's so stupid. And then she breaks it and she's got her voice. And then it kind of plays out the same. I didn't like the scene though. Like, yeah, I didn't it, like it like, either. When, when she gets her voice back in the original one, we've just seen like animals flying and doing yeah. all these crazy, like not magical things basically. In this film, because they, they tried to be so realistic. When you see like a giant ball of light flying around, you're kind of like... This looks so out of place. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and then they're about to embrace, but the sun sets just before they can and kiss, and she turns into a mermaid. Queen is like, she's a sea creature. Ursula turns into a big octopus, snatches away, leaves. And we already mentioned that this is a really bad change because they changed the location. Now Eric is like, he has to leave the wedding, find a boat, and then how the hell is he going to find them? Yeah. Before, you kind of, general location, you're already on a boat, you can yeah. steer it and you might be able to keep up. And the animation just kind of had it that, yeah, he found it. In this one, it makes so much less sense um, because a lot of time passes. We don't know how far they swam out into the ocean. So that's a big dumb change that doesn't make sense, makes the film worse. Um, and so before the uh the attack on the wedding there was an actual comment to sebastian i think go get the king yeah, go get tried yeah. and tell him everything all right here's an example of just basic pay up and sorry set up and pay off that makes sense to justify trident intersecting the um uh, the sea witch on her way out it's very simple to justify plot points when you like uh, someone kind of uh, knew how to do it in this moment then they lost the plot and so many other things to justify uh, certain plot points. And so the sea witch gets stopped by Trident. This is where things go off the rails again because they don't have the contract thing anymore. Mm. Now Ursula is just like, I have magic that you can't hurt me because of the agreement thing. Also that the electric heels can like destroy. Yeah, oh they can, they are strong ass. I know. Not only electrify, fry someone yeah. to death. Yeah. Like they, they disintegrate. They disintegrate. Yeah. So... The eels hold Ariel aside, starts to electrify her, and there's even a dumb comment by Ursula, like, electrifying, isn't it, or something like that. Anyone, some dumb comment. And the exchange doesn't play out nearly as smooth. The animation was just like, you know, trade places with her. Yeah. Um, and the thing is, what, what makes the animation so much better is because then Trident has to sign a contract himself. But yes. He's like, everybody's like, no, it's going to, you know, and he, he, he finally signs. And Ariel's telling him not to do it. Yeah. In this one, Ariel's basically unconscious yeah. um, because she's getting electrified. And he just like throws his Trident. To he just gives her his Trident, like, you know. And I mean, you can't like trust her. She could just take a try. Oh, thanks. I'll take you both now. Uh, I, uh, there's no contract exchange here, right? Mm -hmm. um, but he just gives her the Trident and then she's like, oh, good. The eels start electrifying the king, Trident, 
and disintegrate him. They they, they, kill, they kill him. They kill Trident. He's dead. And then this is the part where it did like it, I, in the original animation, he gets turned into one of the flower, like yeah. the, the garden, which makes sense because you just see them in the exactly. beginning. Exactly, they're forgotten. They're not there anymore. They're, there's none of the turning into the monster. Triton is killed. Yes. So dumb, and we have to because this is related to the end now. Because when they do defeat her, they defeat her. Oh, we'll get to that as well. Um, his Triton falls down from the dead sea queen, yeah. and the magic just. Brings him back alive. Yeah. The trident brings him back alive because that's something it can do now. And it's so much because before it made such logical sense. You killed the sea witch. Her magic is broken. Therefore, her curse is bro broken. Triton comes back alive. And then you actually see her garden and all the mer people are alive. Celebration, happy days. It makes narrative logical sense that that would be the result. Mm -hmm. There is nothing indicating that he could just come back alive because Triton power. Yeah. It's so stupid. And so dumb Dumb change. But anyway, Triton gets killed. And then this is when Eric is, he shoots a harpoon to try and do something. It, it nicks her. And then he's like, ah, oh, the, uh, the, the, the guy. I'm going to make her suffer by killing killing him. And this is where the change starts. This is a happen. big change. The The end scene is completely inverted. Well, yeah. So the, what what happens with the end scene is basically the eels try and bring Eric to her. Like he's obviously drowning. And in both of them, Ariel knocks her and she kills her own uh, eels. The animation was so clear. She literally swims up, grabs her crown, pulls her yeah. back, making her redirect the trident and the, she shoots the eels. And that makes her livid to at, want to kill... At Ariel. At Ariel. She wants yes. to kill Ariel. In this... The eels are literally in front of Eric and there's no redirection. She just fires at her eels. But Ariel does push her. Yeah, I know. They'd show so, the push. So but... it's still her fault. Like, it's just yeah. less clear. It, much less clear. And but so in, the in, execution was way worse. Instead of her fury being on Ariel this time, though, it's on Eric. Yeah, she wants to, like, I'll punish you. by kill. I'm going to kill your lover boy now. Mm. And they swim up together. And then there's the same scene of the crown pushing them apart. And then they're like... Hold my hand! Hold my hand! And then they immediately let go of hands to, to, to dive off. <laughs> it's like, what was the point of holding hands? And then, no joke, they completely rob Eric of his moment. Whatever happened in the animation film, they do the opposite. Yeah. Just literally so, the opposite. So now Ursula is trying to kill Eric. And he's the one on the rock. On the rock. Yeah. And Ariel jumps on board the um, sunken ship that was brought up by the whirlpool and steers it into Ursula killing her. I... It's a shot for shot of what happens in the animation, just the opposite way around. It's, it's so dumb and insulting. Like, she would have no idea how to steer a ship. It made sense that, you know, Eric knows how to steer a ship. He can control it better and stuff. Um, so she's in mermaid form right now. So she's like, yeah, yeah she doesn't exactly have, have legs to yeah, brace sure. herself to steer this thing, right? And in a, in a narrative sense, at the end, okay, when Triton is back alive, Triton says, like, you saved me to Ariel. And then Ariel's like, oh, but Eric helped because humans good. Like, I'm, I'm par But she literally says, like, and Eric helped. No, he didn't. <laughs> he stood there helpless. Just to back up a bit. Yes, Trident died. And then he comes back to life. He comes back to life by Ursula dropping the trident. Mm -hmm. It hits the bottom of the ground and then basically all it the... leaks him out. It, like, yeah, all yeah. The, the orange power comes out of it and he's just back. But in terms of the narrative, this film has a stronger narrative of the divide between humankind mm -hmm. and fish kind, right? That's true. It would have been so much more powerful to have Eric kill the sea monster, save Ariel and bring Triton back alive Whoa. to show that humans can be good and they, they're they going to risk their lives to save fish people. You write that down. You should do, we should do I, that. I, I should, oh, I should wait. be right. Oh, they already did it in the original. Oh. And so like now, exactly, that there's no plot significance or weight for um, Triton to forgive humans to see such a noble sacrifice that a human did for his daughter because it's the daughter that saved the human this time. It's robbed. It's reversed. And it's so much worse. It is such garbage crap. And you know the reason why they did this is the bullcrap politically correct nonsense that you can't have a man save a woman on screen. It's nonsense. Such stupid crap. I can't stand it. Ah, so there we go. Um, but, oh, by the way, how awful did the sea monster look? 
Like when she got like they didn't that's show it. CG. Did they, look, they, if you look like they tried to make it dark, you yeah. see, but it looks so fake when yeah. you really like. Oh wow, that's awful. Yes, the, the line was is like when uh, when Trident says to Ariel, "You saved me." She says, "Eric was with me." Mm. No, he wasn't. He, he was wasn't. on the rock. He was on the rock. He didn't do anything. And then it shows him just swimming ashore, yeah. and I'm like, "Whoa, well, well, he swam the whole way back." Like, what? what? They, they showed this battle in the middle of the ocean. He was nowhere near a shoreline. But anyway, he just swims back. They, uh, oh man, you know what frustrates me? So the animation has this beautiful reveal of her walking out of the ocean after being given legs. They cut that. Like they, they have the magic going to her. And then in the animation, you see her excitement. She looks down and she looks up happy and everything. They cut it. Just magic, nothing. And it has her reveal of her approaching Eric. Is Eric is just sitting there like a sad sack on the uh, wedding balcony thing of the castle, throwing a stick to his dog. The dog doesn't bring it back, and he looks, and she's standing there. I feel but, like we've got to mention, calling it a castle is kind of generous. Like, it yeah. gives you a certain it's gra more of, grandeur. Yeah, more of a military yeah. It's like a fort. fort. It's like a fort. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but... The animation had this glorious, triumphant her walking out of the ocean with a new dress that magicked out of the Triton magic everything. Here, she's wearing the sad, soggy dress she's been wearing the whole movie, and she's just standing there. Like, what a bloody downgrade of a reveal of the triumphant, happy ending where she, where Triton does the sacrifice, grants her humanity. I will mention, by the way, I, I did appreciate Triton sacrificed for his daughter to save his daughter life. They're like that was a you know a noble moment, uh, but then he died. I'm like, Ugh. but the problem was how they executed because yeah, like yeah. It, when he's signing the contract, it's so it's such a yes. weightful yes. moment. Yeah, and it's more a sacrifice I think to give up your life like that than it is just to die. Yeah, because with this one, he kind of just looks at the Trident and then just throws it to her. In the animation, he's like, he's he's hesitating to sign, and then he just he goes, no, I'll sign. He signs, mm. and then. Everything happens. Again, yeah. The animation has more emotional expression uh, than these actors, right? And so now, I don't know, the, the wedding day has them leaving to just go to uncharted waters because they like the sea, I guess. And they get on a dinghy, they're rowing out, and then Triton hopes, pokes his head above water, and it looks so goofy and dumb. It's, it's like there's a touching moment when he's saying goodbye to his daughter. This is, this is fair. But it also doesn't make sense because they're going on a boat Into the in the ocean. Yeah. He's the king the of the ocean. Water areas of the ocean. He, he can he take probably... high any time now. It's, there's yeah, no like, leaving. He's actually, she's actually closer, technically. Yeah. Now. I, I mean, I... the animation does end with them on a wedding boat as well. Yeah. But if, if memory serves, doesn't Triton bring the water up with him to mm. get him onto the yeah. same level yeah. as Ariel? They don't do that here. He just, he's on a lower level in the water and he looks like this, <laughs> like, like and, and it undermines, like, any way to, like, I love you, daughter. He's just, I'm sitting in the water and it's this downwards angle when they could have just, had him magically raise the water and show, you know, he, he is still an imposing royal figure, but no, they don't have that. And then they just have this exchange. And one of the lines is, I shouldn't have... Uh, I shouldn't have had had to have given. I shouldn't have forced you or something to have given up your voice to be heard, or something like that. Because you had to give up her voice to be heard. That's the thing. Bad misogynistic men not letting women be heard is the through line at the end. Subtle. Ah, uh, and then again, it would be so. It would have been so much more powerful. Eric had actually saved Ariel then, because then he could have like, you could have. This could have been a scene when Triton looked at Eric and says, thank you for saving my daughter. Well, the thing is, Ariel saves Eric all throughout the film, mm -hmm. relatively speaking. But it makes sense because he's falling into the water. He's on shipwrecks. Mm -hmm. and so you're like, yeah, this all makes sense. Mm -hmm. And then when it gets to the end, Ariel's being attacked by the giant sea monster. So he attacks the sea monster. Yes. Like, like, that's why it makes sense. But they, they robbed it and reversed it. And it's so much worse as a result. And then that's it. That's the film. They bring in music that feels I like they out. haven't earned it. So I, done. Yeah, mm. I just got up and left. I'm like, I'm, I don't, I don't care if there's a post credit scene. I don't like waiting for them anyway. <laughs> uh, I'm not doing it for this one. And there we go. That's the deep dive overview of the Little Mermaid remake. And what an astounding piece of crap! It was pointless. It was just 
a wet fart compared to it's what it's based on, basically. Um, and uh, I, I, the count, the count of how many times they made unnecessary changes mm. that legitimately made the film uh, worse. It's 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 46, 40, 47. 47 changes that were stupid and pointless that made it worse as a result, undermined either narrative or just worked worse as a scene. And that's why this review is the exact same length as the movie. We go, we, we're happy to do deep dives here. We go in depth and watch it so you don't have to. Thank you for joining us. And hey, a lot of people say they get more enjoyment out of watching us than watching this crap. So we're happy to offer that to you. And look, those are not only the things we noticed. There's probably a lot more, by the way. And if we were going, like, this was very nitpicky. <laughs> but if we went even more nitpicky, there's still countless little changes that you just don't like with, with the hair thing like mm. with the when she brushes her yeah, hair with yeah. it with this one she doesn't brush her hair with it she twirls but it up like spaghetti. you know why i know why <laughs> but we're not going to say why Shad. <laughs> why there's something wrong with pointing that out it is because thanks for watching guys and as always <laughs> stay on watch